put the recap from last week into um, Discord and into Rule 20 and get into it. It's actually not as long as it usually is. We had a shorter session. All right, so last session, two weeks ago, session 44, called To the Ruins or Somewhere. We have to save the goats. All right, Thornton proclaimed, let's go check in with the birds of the feather to see how they're doing, and then we can head to Fargenvoss, told. As the group headed to the Blue Water End, prepared for travel to some old ruins that were actually called Argenvoss, told. They grabbed a table, and Ragnar rolled out the detailed map of Barovia they had just received from the Wachters. The Elder Dwarf inspected the map thoroughly, himself being somewhat of an expert in cartography. He found nothing suspicious or unexpected about the map. They plotted a course to the ruins, not too far from Velaki. They estimated the trip would only take about four or five hours. As they were looking at the map, Deckard entered. Something seemed a bit off with him. Perhaps he was still troubled about the hag from the windmill taking that young child from the festival. He did feel some comfort that he was still tracking the location of the old crown. Unfortunately, he just wasn't up for a trip to a ruined castle with the rest of the group today. So he moved to the back of the tavern and put on not just one mask, but two for extra protection against disease. Then he sat down next to some lady, making sure to keep a six foot distance from her while he looked around for hand sanitizer. <laughs> Sorry, had to make fun of it. Thornton sparked some small talk with an older woman at the bar. She was slurping some cheap beet soup and boiled roots, but she happily shared some of it with him. It seemed she was not used to people who wanted to socialize with her, so she was glad for the conversation. As the dwarf walked away, the woman beamed. A rare moment where our paladin acted paladin-like. He even kept his pants on. The group asked if the Keeper's scouts found out anything about Irina, which they had not. Then Spargle told them of the empty coffin they found hidden in the mansion, which purportedly belonged to Vasily. Irwin gave them a few details about the coffin's maker, Henry Vanderborg, including where his shop was in town. They told, <laughs> Irwin, they told Irwin of their plans to head to Argenvost Holt. They requested that if the keepers learned anything about Irina's whereabouts to send word by Raven. Then the group deliberated over whether to use Lady Wachter's escorts or just find their way there with a map. Spargo was suspicious of Lady Wachter and the others agreed to skip the guides. Thornton summarized, fuck the Wachters, let's go. Once they stepped outside of the inn, they heard a crowd gathering at the town square a few blocks away and decided to check it out. Lady Wachter was giving her inauguration speech with Ernst adorned as some sort of guard captain. Dozens of cloaked loyalists flanked them. In her speech, she proclaimed herself the Countess of Alaki and pledged fealty to Strahd von Zorovich, the rightful Lord of Barovia. <clears throat> she took some credit for the heroics of the group in defeating Ezek and the Baron's guards. Prosperity to us all, she shouted in closing her speech. The crowd responded to her address with cheers and applause. Ragnar barely listened. Instead, he spent most of the time scanning the crowd for Irina or Vasily, but they didn't seem to be there. Gathering their belongings, they headed out of the west gate of Valaki, also known as the Sunset Gate. The guards, now attired in black robes, bid them a good afternoon. Soon they found themselves at a crossroads a few hours outside of town. Referring to their map, they surmised they would need to head to the southeast, which a sign post nearby indicated would take them to Berez. Perhaps Argenvast Holt was on the way, but the map wasn't entirely clear on the route to take. Thornton hopped on his war ram, and the others continued on foot as they made their way in that direction. The proper road turned to a footpath after a few more miles and hugged a calm, clear river along the way. The air grew colder as the foothills of Mount Gacchus rose into an imposing wall to their west. It seemed that perhaps they took the wrong path to Argenvast Holt and were well below it and heading further into a foggy valley. However, they had come so far south now that they believed they were near another point of interest just a few more miles down the path. So they decided to check it out. Soon they found themselves trudging towards a murky swamp. With each step, the fog grew heavier and the mud thicker. It was hard to make out much in the dense fog, but the group could barely see the outline of a ruined village, perhaps some decrepit structures and roads drowning in the foggy marsh. They were entering what seemed like the cold swampy armpits of Mount Gacchus now. On the other side of the river, they saw some large standing stones and a light swinging in the fog held by someone. Dusk was starting to approach as the muted sun dimmed even further. 
Curious about the light across the river, Juniper discussed various polymorphs that she could use to turn someone into something big enough to carry them to the other side. Preferably a big ape, an offer she really hoped someone would take. Alaric was confused about why they didn't just swim across the river, which was only about 300 feet wide, so he did that while the rest finalized their plans. They landed on Thoradin being the subject of the polymorphing. After a few chants and some finger waggling, Thoradin transformed into a massive 18 foot tall gorilla. The enormous beast easily carried Juniper safely across the river. As Thoradin set her down, Alaric reached over and touched her shoulder. Coursing power from the barbarian restored the energy that she spent on the polymorph spell. At this, a few of them looked at Alaric curiously. They discovered the light source. Standing behind one of the tall stones was a peasant woman holding a lantern and a dagger. She seemed a bit taken aback by the sight of a massive gorilla, but cautiously allowed the group to approach. Ragnar greeted her and explained they were looking for the ruins of Argenbostholt. She informed them that they were far from there and asked if the Baron sent them. The peasant woman mentioned that she is also from Valachia and that she had some family there. That she was an anthropologist and her duty was to watch over and explore this old ruined village that seemed to have been consumed by the swamp around it. The woman and Ragnar seemed to connect on an academic level, so she was happy to share some important details about the area. The village was flooded many years ago and is now the home of an ancient witch named Baba La Saga. She's somehow in league with Strahd and she has it out for this woman's family and friends. The hag rarely leaves the swamp and she travels around in a giant skull when she does. She has an army of scarecrows and recently sent them to wreak havoc at her family's winery a few weeks ago and also stole a valuable gem. Ragnar snapped, slapped his knee. Your family runs a winery. Cautiously, she replied, yes. Is it the Wizard of Wines? Apprehensively, she replied, yes. And Ragnar danced a little dwarf jig of excitement. Finally, a friggin' break. The woman trusted them that they were allied with the Keepers and told them her name is Muriel Vinshaw and that Danica Martikov is her sister. Ragnar shared his story of meeting Nathaniel Swift and how he came to be in Barovia. She asked about Velaki's current affairs as she hadn't been there in a few weeks. They explained the change in power to, now, to Lady, now Countess Wachter. She had an impartial reaction to this news. Ragnar told her of their success in freeing Erwin from the Baron's stockades. She was quite impressed. Now trusting them even more, she shared additional information about the swampy ruins of Berez. She warned about numerous animated scarecrows in the area, which she believed the hag controlled. She also told them that Baba La Saga trapped several mountain goats in a pen nearby, but she was unsure why. Juniper immediately demanded, we have to save the goats. Ragnar told Muriel that they also saved the winery, defeated the druids, and retrieved the gem. She was even more impressed. Muriel said that Baba La Saga was more active in the twilight hours and that no other living humanoids, druids or otherwise, seemed to come by here. Muriel was also told them that Baba La Saga was able to rouse these scarecrows at will. She warned them that the hag was dangerous. This member of the Keepers said she would return to Erwin and Danikin and update, that, update them that the group was here and intended to explore the swamp and perhaps save some goats. Ragnar suggested she also let Deckard know that they were here and not at Argenbosthold as planned. Muriel then transformed into a raven right in front of them as she sped towards Velaki with a squawk. The party made their way back across the river. The swamp thickened here. Movement was excruciatingly sluggish and visibility was increasingly short. They could barely see 10 feet in front of them in the thick fog and they slowed with every heavy footstep through the wet mud. However, as they pushed through the fog, they spotted a single solitary scarecrow at the edge of the field. It seemed to start twitching, perhaps just the wind, or maybe it was Baba La Saga. All right, and I will take us to- Well done, very well done. Thank as you. usual. As usual. I'm just the reporter. It's your guys' activity. <laughs> there are many shitty reporters. <laughs> All right. So let me clarify, because I was I was not expecting to get to this point last time. So um, <laughs> let me let me clarify this map and stuff. Um, these this is a massive, massive spread out swamp. Okay. So you're we're gonna have to like really, really zoom in on the map. And you're crawling through these squares. They are 100 foot squares, which usually they're 10 foot squares. The terrain, excuse me, the terrain is difficult terrain. 
So it's like, as you're going through, it's getting thicker and thicker, heavy mud. So you're moving very slowly through it. And the, the fog is in, extremely dense. So you're basically going to be in this little bit of a bubble that you can actually see your immediate vicinity. I'll do the kind of fog of war thing as we go. But even where I have you guys kind of highlighted right now, I mean, that's a few hundred feet across that you're looking at right there. And you do see, I hope, the little scarecrow. If I watch your stream, Adam. Yep, I got it. Yeah, good... we see the scarecrow's on there. Okay. And there um, we... Yeah, so you may want to, like, really zoom the map in all the way to that little spot because we're going to be cr crawling through that spot or crawling through this. Our hero forge images come through really nice then. Yeah, true. <laughs> and that gorilla. You can see his butt. Right. <laughs> you can. Bad gorilla. Just in real life. Bad gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> right, just like in real life. It's true. Ass is always out. You put a fucking coin in there every time. You just... It's like an ATM. All right. <clears throat> Okay, and I sidebarred with with Deckard for the uh, for the record, Deckard for the record, Deckard for the record, Deckard for the record. So so Will knows what he's doing and what's what's going on, and you guys don't know what he's doing. But um... yeah. can you guys hear me? Yep. Loud and clear, brother. Is that sound okay? Does it sound like I'm coming through my webcam or my? We... Sounds like you're coming through your webcam, but it's fine. But it's loud. It's clear. It just sounds that it's got that little tinny. It's like kind of team speak it. versus Ventrilo. All right, and so, um, okay, so that's where we're at. It's getting to be about, you guys would guess, like 7 or 8 o'clock at this point. It's getting hey, to be um, late, late in the how far time. away f are we from that scarecrow, would you guess? <clears throat> like 100, yeah, 100, 100, 150, 200 feet. Actually, this map is to scale, so we can use the, uh, I mean, the roll, yeah, 200 feet from you, Spargle. Okay. 200, 200 feet from Alaric. So what you saw is you kind of came up out of this water. It's thick, swampy stuff. You see the, a little bit of a road, which would not be difficult terrain because it's the only like solid ground around you and you're starting to come up to the road. And on the other side of that road, well through the fog, you see like the little silhouette. You can see like the dark shape of a scarecrow. You can tell it's a scarecrow the way it's kind of like hanging there. And it moved. But you can't tell if it moved because it's alive or if it's just wind, you know, because it's kind of far away. Would it be fair to say that, like, whoever were in the lead on this, you know, like in our marching order, Dan, like that we're probably all in the same square? Given fact, we're not going to be like 50 feet or 100 feet apart. So, like, if, yeah. if Alaric's in the lead, maybe we're like all within a few feet of him. But do you know what I'm saying? Just so we yep. don't like. Yep. No, totally agree. We're just going to have to kind of figure it out as we go. This map is. Not ideal. No, that's cool. Uh, okay. And if you guys were to get into any kind of fight or something here, I have different maps that are normal scale to just run the fights. Okay, so we won't we won't try to do combat with this map. This is think of this almost like an overland map. Yeah. Of a very large swamp. <clears throat> like huge, huge swamp. Got it. We talked about a couple different. Did, I don't know if we landed on it. Did we land on a strategy? Wasn't there a wind thing that we were going to, like, drop in on our hut? Oh, yeah. We were going to try to... I think we were going to have uh, Kong try to carry us in and then drop a, a wind barrier or some kind oh, of barrier. Right. Wind wall. Yeah, keep all the crap uh, trash mm -hmm. mobs away. Yeah, I like to try to sneak in there and then take. <laughs> yes, yeah, so maybe we have the big guy kind of drag us in and just kind of like stomp all over the <laughs> stick monsters. <too. laughs> all right, let's see. So you can move 40 feet as a giant ape. Um, I don't think you can carry everybody. Was that your plan? To carry everybody? 
how many mm-hmm. they carry. Alaric would would prefer to be not be carried by the gorilla. Oh, that was a shock. Oh, well, that'll wow. save a lot of weight. <laughs> it's, that was what I was going for. I could reduce the, the load, load quite a bit. Load. <laughs> I'll walk. Less of a load. I'll walk. Uh, so it's your strength score times 15, and as a giant ape, you have 23 strength. Hey, Google, hey Siri, what's 23, 23 times, times 15? 15? 23 times 15 is 345. My guy's quicker because he's. Mm, never mind. <laughs> like Fargo and, uh, hey, fuck you, like guy. Fargo and Juniper. Times are changing. Can't. Whatever. All right, three hundred forty-five pounds. Really? That's three hundred forty-five pounds. Doesn't make any sense. No. I'm a weak ass gorilla. gorilla. If that's the case. That's the gorilla a... that doesn't squat. That's a gorilla that just sits around and eats dominoes all night. Yeah, that's not, that is, <laughs> You would think he could do double his body weight at least. What was it? 23 times what? 15. Doesn't make sense. So that's what it, that's what the rules say. It's off terrible. That's... If you want to argue with Gary Gygax, be my guest. I'm going to send an email to the Wizards of the Coast and uh... I'm going to get Ed Greenwood on the phone. A very stern e- worded email to Wizards of the Coast. I'm going to call Morton Kanan. All right, while you guys argue about math, I'm going to get a beer. <laughs> no, that's what it's... Yeah, 345 pounds. I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean, that's All carrying... Right, so I... that, that means carrying it, like... That's not deadlifting. That's carrying it around and moving at your normal speed. Yes. He so he basically could Ragnar. Bench, he could bench more than that. But... So Ragnar yeah, you could bench could basically probably twice. Fucking... Ragnar and maybe Sparble. No, no. Take, take D&D Beyond says 30 times strength. Ooh. Oh, really? I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the basic formula for push, drag, and lift in, in, in D&D Beyond. Strength score times 30. Where's Doug when you need and him with the rules? Two per size. Or it says also larger than medium. That's times two. I'd like to phone a friend. I'd like to call Doug. <laughs> So a human with 20 lifts about 600 pounds. Uh, let's see here. Because if, that, if that's the case, Ragnar could carry more than the giant ape. <clears throat> I could be, I'm, I'm looking at ND and D beyond, but I don't know. So, if so I'm talking about carrying capacity. You're talking about push, dragging, or lifting. Or yeah, lifting. That's, that's a short burst. Yeah. That's not right. That's like, that's like, that's like, that's like. Clean and jerk lifting. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Carrying, carrying okay. capacity is the yeah. weight you can carry without slowing yourself down. Gotcha. So you can just keep walking around. You won't get you won't get fatigued. You will keep your normal sense. speed. I'm right. Working. Like I could pick up 400 pounds, but don't expect me to go up a flight of stairs with it. Right. If you okay. carry okay. weight in excess of five times your strength, you are encumbered, which means your speed drops by 10. I'd say you carry the two. Yeah, that's two a bitch ones. in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Thank God we don't do encumbrance, you know, in, in this. God, you know what I mean? Keep track of all the shit you're carrying around and all that. Even like coin and all yeah. that shit. Ugh. Yeah, you guys loot a chest and it's like 10,000 coin. It's like, boop, put it in your, you know. You know what? That's fine, though, because the worst part of Skyrim is when I want to pick up a fucking helmet and I got to drop three gems, yep. four fucking sticks. That's I got to drop an old fucking shield that I wanted because mm-hmm. it had plus fishing on it. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> fuck, fuck this game, you know. Plus fishing. Just give it to Lydia. She'll carry it. Lydia. I make her carry everything. Mm-hmm. That's all they're good for. I'm I'm walking around fucking the first town. I forget what it's called in Skyrim, and I'm going at a snail's pace because I'm too. I don't want to get rid of anything. <laughs> you want to sell all that that trash? All right. So what do you guys want to do here? <laughs> I don't think. Well. <laughs> God, if only one of us could talk to animals, maybe we'd understand what he was saying. Oh, that guy died. <laughs> he didn't use it on animals anyway. Don't worry. I can speak with animals. He used it on zombies. <laughs> you you can't. 
uh, Juniper, you can talk to plants, right? I can talk to animals, too. Oh. Ask the gorilla what he wants to do. Juniper turns and asks the gorilla what he wants to do. I say we charge over there and show him what a gorilla's made of. He says he wants to fight. That's not what I said. <laughs> okay. He says he wants to charge over there and show him what we're made of. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's, that's, that's good. That's, right. Better than that's, I do. Well Thank done. You. All right, let's let's do it then. And what's the let's worst that happen? Right? All right. So you guys, yep, go ahead. All right, so so you're moving. Uh, let's see, these are 100-foot squares. It's gonna t It takes like a couple rounds to move each square. Since we're not in combat, I'll let you guys sort of like crawl through, uh, and I'll slowly reveal the, the area as we go. I do it like mm. this. So, so are you, which way are you heading? Are you going to go towards this scarecrow, towards the road, a different direction? Uh, towards the sca towards the scarecrow. Okay. All right, and it is you know this is the the further you get into this swamp and the darker it gets, it's it's harder and harder to see. It's got the the swamp itself has that terrible like peat, boggy, mossy smell, but it also you're getting like layers of like decay of something like a, a meat decay, which is nasty. Ooh. There's flies everywhere. So like you're constantly just flies all around you obnoxiously. Um, you can see you can see about 120 feet out at this point, um, which is pretty good. Is that a um, road intersecting? Yes. yes. So so it and it is very very slow movement. You're like trudging through this stuff, and it gets thicker and thicker. And even even the big gorilla legs are having a hard time of like lifting up and. You know, it's like walking through, you know, a foot of mud. Um, but you, you get a little bit closer and you see that it is a scarecrow on a stick. And it looks like a regular scarecrow. Can you throw anything at that scarecrow from a distance, big gorilla friend? <laughs> I don't know if there's any rocks around. If we get to the road, maybe we, we stick to that and head whatever southwest so is, is 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 juniper the translator yeah I'm, I'm the translator um i'd like to rip that scarecrow out of the ground and launch it across the swamp he doesn't like the scarecrow he wants to fuck up the scarecrow you're the worst translator ever <laughs> <laughs> she's paraphrasing I, I point to a large rock and i go Point to the scarecrow. So I, I, I tip my gorilla hat to Sparkle, and I, I go towards the rock, and I get ready to Randy Johnson that thing against the scarecrow. <laughs> All right, let me see. So you're about. Let's. How far are you from it right now? About a hundred feet away. You might have to get a little bit closer. So I'll assume you move up close enough that you're within the range that you know you can kind of chuck that rock. Is that fair? Um, yeah, and go ahead and make a ranged weapon attack. You get plus nine to hit on this, and you can do you can be fifty feet away. So tell me if you want to be fifty feet away, or if you want to try to throw it from a distance. You can roll with disadvantage up to a hundred feet. You're muted. You're muted, Matt. Sorry. Um, I'd like to go 50 feet. I, I'll buy a vowel. We'll do that. Okay. All right. And then, yeah, roll your attack. And we're using the D&D &D Beyond? Yeah, let's let's do that. I think that'll be a, a good change. That's right, that's right. That's right. I like it. What the hell did I have to do? Uh, I hit the little button. So that's, yeah. a, natu that's a seven? Team log or something, yeah. Yep. And then... Um, Plus nine is that's a sixteen. Is that a hit? Yep. Oh, um, a sixteen. Uh, yep. You hit it, 
and uh, go ahead and roll for damage. Uh, oh, let me pull up my monkey card to see what the damage is. <clears throat> I totally forgot we did this differently last time. Uh, what did I need to do, Dan? To, uh... On D&D Beyond, when you're on your sheet or on the campaign, there's a game log. The campaign. Log, that... Okay, that that was it. I needed to go to the campaign. Curse of Strahd. You campaign. 7d6 plus 6. Oh, my God. That's insane. Game log? Uh, how... Oh, my goodness. Um, I got it. Ignore me. Oh, wait. So, okay. So I think I'm where you're at, Adam. So I'm trying to roll six of them. Oh, okay. I see it. D6. Plus six. Okay. So that's. Now, is that, is that six added to the final count or is it six added to each die? Uh, the final count. So it's seven D6. You should have done one more d6. Or, or wait. Oh no! You know what? I it doesn't show it on the screen, right? Did you do six? Wait, you did six d6. Yeah. Okay. So twenty-one plus six is twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-seven. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you you're like hoo, 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 get up in front of your group and you and you like slot you 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 guys see them pick up this pretty good sized rock i mean this is like a boulder you know for most of you and uh he one hands it you know he's about 50 feet away and he throws it um and it hits this scarecrow um uh thordon you probably see it because you're closer but it hits the scarecrow in the in the chest and it just like bursts open uh the one of the arms kind of like dangles down the head kind of rolls off to the side but what you see instead of like straw stuffing come out is uh is just a huge puffing cloud of black feathers that just they come out and they just kind of like fall to the ground um and as soon as that happens about 40 feet into the fog behind that scarecrow you hear this like sound that it's like uh someone trying to talk maybe but in just a crazy like guttural gibberish language like it's just like making like <laughs> oh. <laughs> just like so oh, that like, sounds good i like it i want you to do that again soon exactly how i did it yeah that was good <laughs> I can never do that again. <laughs> goblinoid uh and the uh the scarecrow that you hit suddenly like it, it like the the, the uh, feathers and stuff burst out of it and it's kind of like laying there still but then its arms start like moving as it like just kind of like puts itself back together a little bit. It's oh, got like no. less substance in it. Oh, and then good. Like, it like hops off of this stick. Okay, so it's T1000. Got it. Okay, that's all you had to say. T1000. Got it. Oh, no. Oh, and we're in combat. Fuck my. Mm, sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. This might take <laughs> me a minute. <laughs> you hate to see it. Good. I little did I know that we were fighting the Barovian version of fucking Scarecrow T one thousand. I didn't know that was gonna be a thing. <laughs> we may have to go for right to Baba Yaga. Call to John. <laughs> I know this hurts. <laughs> Fuck yeah. What's wrong with Wolfie? Oh Wolfie's fine, dear. Come home. We made dinner. <clears throat> oh, the parents are dead. You lost the parents are dead. Yeah. Well, that escalated quickly. How much damage did you do again? Uh, with my throw, um, I did. Let me look at the game log. Uh. Uh, it's, Four? it's actually my screen. Cuts off. I can't see the bottom roll. Is that happening for anybody else? Uh, on the yeah. game log? Oh, okay. Yeah, you got it. 17 I... and 4. So 21 plus 6, it was 27, right? 27. 27. That's correct. 27. All right. Um, can everybody roll initiative? Including Deckard. 
Ooh. Uh oh. Um, initiative for the gorilla is. Is it going to be my initiative, Dan? Because I don't see initiative for the gorilla. Um. Well, yeah, it would be a d20 plus your dexterity as a ape. So plus. As, two. Okay, got it. So d20 plus two. Uh, let's see, Alaric, you had a 22. Oh, Eight yeah, for me. brother. Mine's a 12. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, loud and clear. Okay. How, so I'm rolling on D. I'm rolling on D and D Beyond now. If you want to, that's the easy way to do it. You can just click your init button, or you can just roll manually or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Sparkle, you had a 13. Sorry, I was muted. Yep. Gotcha. And you guys can see this roll when I do this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's really cool. If you click. If you click, you know, that the box at the top that says campaign will to the right of it, you see the little like that little like message box in red. Yeah. Oh, if you cool. click on that, it brings up the game log so you can see everybody's rolls. Cool. Okay, and then the rolls. Oh, no, that's not what I want. Don't want what is this thing? Oh there we go. No, I don't want it. So I had uh, 22. All right. Nice. Two. Okay. So scarecrow. Okay. Holy shit. Spargle. Then Ragnar. Then Thornton. Jennifer. <laughs> Why am I missing somebody? You didn't, oh, because he's a girl. Yeah, I'm, I, I I know where Deckard's at. So okay. okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So Alaric, it's your turn. Um. Okay. So how uh, are the, are these mm. ten? These are ten. These yeah. Are 10? So okay. what I did it. What I did is this is like a battle map. I might reuse it a couple times tonight. It's just a swamp battle map. It's way easier than doing that other thing. So yeah, you're you're that far away from it. Um, actually, you were actually. I'm gonna put you guys back. Sorry, because this wasn't like kind of set to where you actually were. Um, okay. Yeah, Thornton was right about there. He was about fifty feet away, and then you guys were kind of a little bit behind. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, I can actually get there. Uh, uh, for starters, Alaric is going to use his uh, bonus action. This is this is new for me, so bear with me for one second. Uh, well, the, I get. I guess the base here is indifferent. Uh, he's going to um, let out uh, a battle shout to enable his rage, and. I need to make a roll here. Hold on. Here we go. All right, now I got it. So I got to roll a d8. So I have to roll a d8, and then <clears throat> a bunch of random things could happen. So I go to the roll. <coughs> I'm going to roll D D8. So I rolled a 1. So... Do you want me to read this, Dan, or are you just going to know what it is? Um, is? I'm trying to find it on your sheet. So... Uh, I'm on your sheet. Where's it at? So it's Wild Surge. Oh, it's I it's any anytime it. I enter a rage, it does yeah, a thing. No, I, got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, okay. and we wrote up that thing. Do you have that thing? That I wrote up with the modifications. Shoot. Wait, what? Modifications? Remember Dan sent us um, like a version of our character sheet? 
that was like a little different from what's on D and D Beyond. I think that's what he's referring to. Oh. No. Uh. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh, remember, Adam? I sent you a thing, like a little bit of a, a write up. Was that on, on Slack? Specific... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I remember that PDF. You, the PDF you sent me. Maybe. Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah. I can find it. Hold on. I'm looking for it too. I think you sent it to me. On. Slack. It's like when my supervisor asked me for a thing that I was supposed to work on like six weeks ago, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I got it. Be right out. Was it on Discord, <laughs> maybe? Um, I'm not sure. I th yeah, I think it was. I think you did send it to me on Discord. That's where it was. How do you do that ruler thing on the map? So if you click. So this PDF the, you sent me. Yeah, okay. On the left, top left of your map, like on row oh. 20. Oh, whoa, whoa. There's, whoa. Um, this is different. The third icon, the one in, uh, it's the third down. It looks the like hourglass? Going. Got it. Okay, I understand. That, that, that it, was just, it was just uh, like some slight modifications. Okay. Correct. I correct. got it. It's I'll, below yeah. the magnifying glass. Uh, I got it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, okay, so right. I do that. Uh, the, the, the let out a battle scream, and um, I think I can actually make it to that guy if my math is correct here. <clears throat> um, make it to that guy. Make, make it to the scarecrow, right? So 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. So. Yeah, you're 60 feet from it. Oh. Oh. Walking speed's 40, so I use it. Okay, all right. Then you know what? I'll, um. I mean, you could walk up and yeah. do the thing you just did if you want to just okay. say that's what yeah, you did. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right. So. So how far can, can I move, move up? up to five. 40 feet. So like right here? Yeah. Why can you move 40 feet? Uh, that is part of my something. Oh, wow. That's huge. Uh, yeah, it was normally 30, but I think it was part of my something I took at a level up. I think I get like plus can... 10 to walking. Sure. Who can run as fast as a horse or a wolf? Yeah. Uh, so um, that's it for me. Wait, so you did that thing or you just walked up? No, no, I did that thing initially before I moved and then I moved up, right? So I used my movement and my bonus action. Right? Right, what order did you do that in though? I used, the, I used my bonus action first as I did the battle cry as I was like running up. Is how I okay. So it. when it so the thing that it triggered didn't do anything then. I don't think so. Well, I mean that doesn't make sense. If you want to do it the other way around, you can. Okay. Well, I didn't want to. Get... Okay. Well, all right then. Yeah. Right. So I l let's say I would have been running up, drawing my weapon, and uh, letting out a battle cry, enabling my rage, right as I got within my. You know, my maximum movement speed. Got it. Okay, perfect. So, uh, let, so let me, you want me to describe it or you want to describe it? That's up to you. I don't care. Okay. So, so um, Alaric goes running forward, and as you've always seen him do, he kind of gets into that battle stance where he's, you know, he's just kind of raging. And uh, this time, though, as he's raging and running up, he kind of like stops because he can't get to the, he can't get to the scarecrow. He's like twenty feet short short of it. And actually, some of you are like, "What the hell is he running for? He's not going to reach." <laughs> he's pretty far away, but he gets up pretty close, and then he stops, and he's just he's just veins are ripping out of his neck and everything, and he's just standing there ready to just rip this thing apart. You guys see just like uh, Carnage from the Venom comic books. You see these tendrils start just coming out of him, like just coming out of his chest and body these red they look like blood just like and they come circling around the scarecrow um and then i have to make a constitution savings throw correct is that what that says yep okay 
uh, a three. You did not win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can roll your uh, your damage there. Okay. <laughs> you did not win. Sparkle, have you had any meat pies lately? Pie crust three thirty would like to know on Twitch. Four. I don't know who that is. Pie crust three thirty. So know then, do I do I <coughs> roll a separate for the temporary hit points on that? Do I roll separate, or is it just the same roll? I think it's separate. Okay. <clears throat> I am drinking a strawberry pie sour, by the way. No. There you go. So I get Flavored four temporary hit points. Okay, so I'm, I'm good with my turn. You can carry on. Wait, so you you're, you did two D12s? Yes. Yeah, they were both four. So, or children oh, both... pies. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. All right, these red tendrils that that come around this scarecrow, they they start ripping its arms and sticks apart even more, and and you see even more of these black feathers just kind of scattering around the ground as this thing is all just sort of like it doesn't like move like a a, a shape anymore. It's just kind of like some some sticks and cloth just flapping around together. Sounds good. Um, doesn't look like it can do a whole lot right now. Um, Sounds really healthy. Just the way God made you. <laughs> At the edge of the fog, another scarecrow uh, right here comes comes through the fog and oh, just emerges out of out of the bog and is oh, moving towards fuck you guys. Me. Oh God! Let's see, they move. They move thirty. Fuck me. Uh, two, three. Okay. Oh, he's, moving, he's moving very robotic, like towards the group. She used the term army of scarecrows a few times. So. <laughs> um, oh, and, and then it is this scarecrow's turn. And without any fear of, at all of this crazy raging barbarian and all this blood tendrils and stuff, the scarecrow just comes running forward towards you, Adam. Um, and it swings um, twice at you with these claws. Okay. Um, a 12 and a 7? Nope. I assume neither of those hits. So, uh, you are just ripping muscles right now. All this blood weird stuff, and it's just like, just like, twat. <laughs> blood like, weird stuff. I barely feel any of it. Sparkle, it's your turn. Um, the one that's right in front of Alaric. Um, I am going to launch a chromatic orb. I say, uh, like this, and you see a ball up here, and I go, here, Scarecrow, have a ball! And I... <laughs> throw it. Someone didn't like that. All right. That's later. also from Wizard of Oz. Uh, Have a ball. Is it working? Oh, not yet. I had a spiral. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. Oh, oops, I screwed up. I, here we go. Here it goes. F up. 18? That 18 to hit? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a hit. And what kind of chromatic orb was this? Uh, fire. You guys, I'm gonna fucking. Yeah, you like that, huh? Oh my god. What? Just, I keep losing my Yeti mic. I don't know why it won't use my damn microphone. Anyway, that's why I keep dropping out. Like, it, it won't detect my microphone. Make sure that Windows, I know you've probably done this, but I know it's fucked with me a bunch of times. Make sure that your Windows and your Discord have the same settings. Also, because... not to derail, make sure it's in the proper USB port. The Yetis can be really weird if they're like 3.0 or not 3.0. Got it. I've run into that. You sound fine, though. You're good. You sound good to us, or to me. Okay, um, okay Spargle, you're, you're, uh, this chromatic orb kind of you know just sort of like floats out and hits this scarecrow and just it disintegrates it. The, oh. the, the sticks, the clothing, the black feathers, everything just goes up into a, just a ball of flame as it's dead. Okay. Anything else? 
Uh, don't think so. Nope. That's, I'll, I'll, where's that other one here? Um, no, I'll actually stay put. Okay, cool. All right, Ragnar, your turn. Uh, okay. I'm going to go, I think I have 25 feet. Yeah. I'm going to go right there next to the gorilla. And I'm going to quick, uh, I'll, I'll slap him on the leg and give him a little nod of approval. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> slap I'm going to pull out my, uh, I have a light crossbow. <laughs> I'm going to pull that out. And take aim at the uh, the other one that's further away. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack. Uh, so this is... How does this work? I don't really do ranged. 1d8. Thord and the gorilla see Sa uh, Ragnar pulling out a crossbow. And he goes, hoo, hoo, hoo. Crashes his head. Is that my birthday? <laughs> is Plus two on that. Um, I don't know. You, maybe you haven't used this thing in a little while, or you fumble with the mechanism. But uh, your <laughs> shot goes way off to the to the side. You know, it doesn't even it doesn't even get near it. Harry, right, you're right a horrible looked, shot. He looks at the crossbow. He looks at the crossbow, disgusted. Um, it's totally I, the crossbow. <laughs> can I do it? Can I do it twice? Like with the attacks? Can you do that twice? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it. Call it <laughs> exasperated. Like turn it around. You were holding it the wrong way. Turn it around and actually hold the trigger this time. I look at it. I just say maybe I didn't load it right. <laughs> and, and I just start cursing in dwarvish. <laughs> Try again. All right. Roll your second attack. Ten. This time, this time, uh, the 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 arrow goes in, or the bolt goes in the right direction, but um, it misses it misses the scarecrow. <laughs> so I just take the crossbow and I just say, "You piece of shit," and I shove it back in my pack. <laughs> it was a good experiment, right? Yep. Got to use it once in a while. <laughs> All right, throw it in. It's your turn. Um. Yeah. So. Uh... Let me look at my ape sheet because I got some cool things that I could do. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move towards this other scarecrow. Uh, so forty feet's the rule. What are these? Ten feet each? Or let me right. check my my yep. ruler. Be, I'll be a good boy. Okay. So I could I I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right up to this. This scarecrow, and I'm gonna I'm gonna beat my chest a little bit, <laughs> um, and I and I'm just I'm really mad, so I'm gonna just take my fist, and I'm gonna just whack him with my fist, um, so I'm I'm gonna do that. That's a D twenty plus nine. Jesus. Be on the lookout wow. for that. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. Well, it says fist melee weapon attack plus nine to hit, reach ten feet, one target, hit twenty two. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Hit twenty two. I'm just gonna. Uh, do that that is you. That's just the average of the. That's like a, a fixed damage. You you want to roll the. You need to roll the dice. That's like. Oh, okay. It's, sometimes you. It's like a shortcut to not roll the dice. It gives you the average damage. Some DMs it. will just roll with that. To speed okay, it up. got it. You want to. You want to roll three d's ten yeah. plus six. So I got. I got a, a twenty six. Is that a hit? Uh, twenty six hits. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, great. Um. <laughs> too much. Wow. Oh, wow. Didn't see that coming. Three d ten. So and then so that's oh, that's an eight plus a six is but it's a whopping fourteen. Fourteen. I'll stay. Sir, I suggest you hit. Um all right. Uh you get to make two 
fist attacks. Fuck yeah! All right, let's do it again. Um, do it, do it again. Okay. That's a eight. It's a twenty-seven. That's a hit, I believe. Uh, that's a hit. Pull that damage again. Oh! Holy shit! All in. All right, two so one six. So you roll. You roll up, and this scarecrow is like doing its like dangly kind of dancey thing, and you come up and beat your chest, and you swing the first time, and you rip one of its. You you actually punch one of its arms off. Like, it just stick and black feathers go everywhere as it lands on the ground with your with your left hook. And then you come back with this right-hand haymaker over the top of the scarecrow's head and just pound it. You literally pound its head into the ground and flatten the whole thing, and the whole just feathers go up like like uh, like you threw a garbage bag off a, gar off a building. Wow. Uh, and uh, it is completely dead. Hey, Bobby, they ever find that gorilla that been bothering you? No, no mama. No, mama. The search, the search continues. The search continues, <laughs> mama. Uh, Spargle, you hear the... Um, from the... Uh, hold on one second. I got to look at something. From the northeast along this, what looks like the, the road, with the road like submerges and it comes back up and submerges and stuff, but you hear a horse whinny about 150 feet away. Uh, and let's see, Juniper, it's your turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait. No, 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 there is. Hold on one second. And so you hear, sorry, you hear this horse whinny to the northeast. Um, and then Alaric, you see from uh, the tr one of the trees out in front of you, uh, you see another one of these scarecrows emerge. And then you hear and you spin around and you see another one um, behind the tree. And they're sort of like lumbering. Oh, And Juniper, it's your turn. I'm the only one that saw that one. Uh, well, I mean, you guys all kind of see it, but Alaric, you see it first. Okay. And each one of these squares is five feet. Ten. So, <clears throat> Jennifer is going to reach over. This is helpful to you, Spargle. But she she puts her hand on him, and all of a sudden, it feels like his skin is just a little bit stiffer. Like, ooh, give yeah. us stiffy. No, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no. On Matt's birthday. No, well, Jeez. well if it was <laughs> if it was applied, I'm sure it would work. Oh, bark skin, bark no. skin, nice. You're giving out hand jobs. I mean, come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so yeah, so Spargle, you you and I think you've done this before, or felt this before, back in uh, Pandelver, maybe, but <laughs> I felt it before. <laughs> yeah, you did. Sure, yeah, back in Boy Scouts, right? Oh uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, your skin, your, you, you know, you kind of like at first you're like, well, what's she doing? And then the app, it, it, you kind of realize yeah, and you feel the, the, the armor kind of form around you. Nice. Hey, thanks. All right. Anything else, Juniper? No, she's not going to move. She's going to stay behind the giant ape and with the rest of her friends. <laughs> Probably a good strategy. All right. right this scarecrow here uh let's see you start uh one, starts running over towards alaric and Did we lose alaric, Will? is Will not here? he's back 
your turn, Alaric. Well, you, which one moved? This one? Uh, that. Yep, that one. That one moved. So, okay. Walking down the path towards you, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... Um... And remember, when your guys aren't on the path, which you have been on so far the whole time, it's going to be difficult terrain. So you move at half speed through all the swampy oh, areas. Yeah. So for me to move one to... I mean, I should be able to make it to this guy, right? I mean... That's, oh, yeah. that's yep. the path. You got, okay. you got 40 movement speed. Yeah, you're good. Okay. So, um, all right, sorry. And just, just to clarify that, uh, that, that, uh, the, the thing that I rolled on before, that's just, a mm -hmm. just, just when I in, in, enable it, right? It doesn't do anything afterwards. Right. I don't think it's so. Just right. when I use my rage. Okay. Correct. All right. Cool. It's so, like when, um, you trigger, when you trigger it, that happens. It's like an extra thing that happens when you rage each time. Got it. Okay. So, I uh, I was drawing my um, my spear of Kavan as I was running up before and screaming all sorts of nonsense, um, <laughs> in hopes of killing these monstrosities. Um, so I'm I'm already weapon in hand. So I just continue my my uh, my tread up, and I get in this thing's face, and I'm just gonna try to take a slash at it. Okay. Um. Wait, you're you're a slash at it, or you're you're using your spear? Uh, using your spear? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. You're jabbing uh, it, piercing uh, it with yeah, your spear. Sure. However, I have to do that with a spear. Okay. Jabbing. You you poke with spears. You I poke. With swords. I, I know. It's All just right, it's not it's not it. as exciting when I say poking. <laughs> I try to pierce him with my spear. You thrust. You thrust. I thrust. Spear. There we go. There's better verbiage. Thrust it into his temper <laughs> <center> maps. <laughs> yes. Utilizing all I the I went for his hollow the heart. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so I think I can just click this. The two hit box, yeah. Right. Awesome. It pauses. For it's a just. For me, but yeah. It's just my my only thing is because I have I have stuff that I can do where I can like you know I can uh, attack recklessly and all that stuff. I just don't know how that works with the rolling. If uh, I, I I didn't do it this time because I didn't want to spend twenty minutes figuring it out, but. It's fine. You just click it twice, right? Isn't recklessly just advantage? No, no, it's uh, it's uh, dis. I think it's disadvantage. Uh, or my great okay. weapon master thing. I mean, because that it, I roll twice and then I take the lower rolls or something like that, or I, I get something minus. Anyways, that's fine. I'll just take an attack. Okay. So twenty-two hits. Okay. So fourteen damage. Fourteen. All right, um, you you hit it very squarely. In fact, your spear goes right through the center of the, the chest area of this of this scarecrow. But you, you kind of notice that it doesn't kind of grip. It doesn't kind of grip the you know. It doesn't rip through as much substance because of the light feathers and stuff. It almost feels like you're kind of poking through and not hitting the core of it, and the damage doesn't seem to do what you'd expect it to do. Okay. As piercing resistance it took half okay uh then i will use my bonus action to make another attack all right 19 hit it's a hit uh nine damage all right same thing it just seems to be not as kind of impactful as you would have expected all right that's uh that is it for me. Okay. All right. Spargo, it's your turn. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, does this guy look like he's in pretty good shape? I know it's kind of hard to tell from this distance, probably, but yeah, he does. He does. Um, even though Alaric's like kind of going insane, like he always does, and he's jabbing at him with this this blood spear of his, it doesn't seem like that spear is doing a lot. Okay. Um, all right. 
I am going to, so if I have 25 feet is my movement, is that just like, do I, what do I, how far can I go because of the terrain and stuff? Oh, because it's 10 foot squares? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if you're staying on the road there, I'd say you can get to right in front of Ragnar. Okay, like right here? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'll do the, the I'm going to, I go, uh, I say, oh, thick skin. And then I go running up in front of Ragnar, and then I'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to launch another chromatic orb. Um, it seemed fairly effective there. Um, at the one that's um, in front of... Actually, no, I'm going to do... Let me see if I can... If I'm in distance here. It's, yeah, I can do it. I'm going to shoot... I'm going to actually shoot at the, the other one here, Dan. Uh, this guy over here. The yeah. one of the, like, south. Okay. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So 13. That hits. Yep. Same thing. Fire. Okay. Roll it up. Uh, 13 damage. It was 19 to hit 13 damage. I just rolled damage because I hit on an 18 last time. So I figured. Uh, okay. So it's uh, this one down here. Yeah. Eight. 13 damage. You, 13 damage. All right. Fire. Mm -hmm. You hit it, and it seems to do a massive amount of damage, uh, and then it it continues to burn even after the, the, the orb hits it, uh, and it looks pretty messed up. Um, i got to grab a beer and a drink. I'll be back in, like, two. If you got okay, I break. need to get beer I'm and just gonna yell Let's, out let's take two. All right, gonna... taking a minute. Yeah. Are we taking yeah. a break real quick? Okay. Yeah, sorry. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's pie crust? They know uh, Spargo likes meat pies. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird, but I'm I'm here for it. I think it's pretty funny. Oh, Adam has Discord set. I'm looking at his Twitch stream. He has Discord set so that it only shows the boxes of the active cameras. Yeah, I have so that. 
set to uh, because we have 15 people here, but only four of them have. Is that all right that I do that? I mean, I, yeah, I, I no, just I, I just figured that like rather than because I know we have a lot of people here and people that are hanging out. So rather than having like 30 different boxes and stuff, it just shows the video feed. Yeah, no, I think that's a good good call. I, 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 I just thought it would be less confusing for the nobody that watches the stream. You are way smarter than my other brother. I'm playing D&D. Wow, that says a lot. All right. Love you. Can you close the door? Okay, and you bye. go on way fewer vacations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep rolling just because I want to move this. I know not everybody might be back, but we'll, Wait, we'll catch Wait, can up. I just say, though? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You you hit that thing with the, the fire chromatic orb. Um, yeah. You hit it squarely. Uh, it... it blew a lot of it apart uh and then it burned even further it's almost like the scarecrow is like smoldering a little bit i go uh so i yell out to the group too that uh two things i'm like i yell uh hey fire seems effective and then i also say i also think we've got incoming from the northeast i heard a horse Did anybody else hear that oh. i just yell that out good call <laughs> um this scarecrow here, um, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. These things were, were using their dash action, too. Well, in any event. Uh, so they're using their, their uh, yeah, they're dashing. They're, they're kind of like scrambling towards the group so they can move 60 feet at a time. Uh, and this one comes uh, barreling forward. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to undo that. Um, so this scarecrow uh, comes running up. And uh, the one you just hit, Sparkle? Yeah. And uh, you see its face just kind of like contort into this angry sort of scowl. And he's staring right at you. Um and then he's like, he's like glaring in your eyes and you suddenly start to feel like it creeped out a little bit. I need you to make a, a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Have you guys seen any of the pictures from Perseverance? Perseverance? Oh yeah, some of the 4K like shots Oh and stuff. my God, in, insane. Oh, yeah. And it's insane. Oh, of Mar yeah, no, I have I haven't really seen any of them. I've, oh I've my god, them. it's it's nuts. I need to watch The Martian again. Oh, I love that. I read the book. The book's good too. I love that book. The book is so good. Yeah, it's a good it's a good book. I'm just uh, using my phone now because Discord will not fucking work on my computer. It's annoying. I've been playing with it for an hour. Like I'm ready to kill somebody. <laughs> why PC can't or Discord? Why can't it just detect my shit? It, it Discord's the only thing that does that on my computer, where it just won't use the system audio device, or if I switch between them, I gotta fuck with it a hundred. And times. then when Bluetooth is involved, it's even more fucking that's complicated. What it, that's what I was trying to deal with. But then I said, "Screw it! I'm getting rid of the Bluetooth." I plugged into my Yeti with a corded headphone, and it still wouldn't work. I'm like, my big, my biggest gripe with Discord is exactly what you're going through, and I've gone through it, and Adam's gone through it. That the audio, like Dan said, there's always a fucking problem with it. Always. Hmm. All right. So, um, Sparkle, you, 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 uh, this scarecrow that you just hit, he comes running up, he scowls at you. Um, suddenly you are just more than you usually are because you're pretty resilient to all kinds of craziness. Terrified. Absolutely terrified of this thing to the point where you are just frozen. And you are going, you are now. paralyzed you are frightened so you have the frightened condition and you are paralyzed until the end of this scarecrow's next turn frightened right you said right yep damn frank so you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within sight and you can't willingly move closer 
uh, to that target, and you're also paralyzed until the next turn. Until after its next turn. Okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> Excuse Ragnar, me. Ragnar, so Spargle Thank right you. in front of you. You saw that happen right in front of you, and you're like, Spargle's just standing there. It's like, you're, like he's ready to like... I mean, if you saw that oh. scene in Stranger Things with the kid in the cafeteria where she makes him piss his pants and he's just kind of standing there, that's what Spargo's doing right now. <clears throat> so Ragnar just looks at uh, Spargo and, he's, and says, don't worry, he's just a bag of twigs and leaves. He's, he's nothing. Don't worry about him, Spargo. Um, how long would it take me to use my tinderbox and light my torch? Can I do that? Yeah, we can go. do that with an action. Here we go. Okay, so could I maybe like just move in front of Spargo and just do that, and that would be my turn? Hold on, I want to see if uh, lighting a torch is just an uh, uh, like a free action, action or whatever. Right, whatever you call that. The uh, yeah, free action. You need to you you need to take the use an action unless you have free action. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think it kind of does require you to use an action because it kind of like takes a little bit of time. Okay, so would I be able to basically just move in front of him and just light the torch? Yep. All right, so I'm going to just move in front of Spargle and I'm going to have my torch lit in one hand and my sword in the other. Perfect. Okay. Um, as you walk forward and light this you light this thing, this scarecrow, even though they don't f seem very sort of interactive in, in humanoid or human behaviors, they, it, it does seem to like kind of reel back a little bit, almost instinctively from the, uh, from the flames. Thoradin, you suddenly, it's almost like the entire world around you is being, is growing. The trees, the swamp, your friends, everything just seems to be getting taller and bigger around you uh, as you find yourself uh, shrinking back into your uh, normal uh, self. Fair enough. Ragnar looks over at, at the, sh the now dwarf and says, I liked you better as a gorilla lad. <laughs> well, I never liked you at all, you fucking <laughs> wanker. <laughs> and that Ragnar just goes, fucking hill dwarves. <laughs> but well, then laughs, laughs and gives him a nod. <laughs> yeah. I turn around and grab my balls. I go, yeah, okay. Uh, it is your turn, though. Um, um All right, so I'm... I'm... I'm on this road, kind of, right? Technically, or am I not on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can go ahead. You were right there. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, how long I got? I think I'm 25 feet. I think is my speed. Right. Is uh, Sierra okay? This, yep. This, okay. Yep. That scarecrow is just a pile of uh, feathers and and sticks. You can walk right over it and get there. Yep. Uh, I made you make a joke. Um. I will. Um, I'm gonna use my. Right, I'm gonna use my bonus action. Okay. To cast Misty Step. Okay. Uh, which I can move thirty feet up to an unoccupied space that I can see. Nice. So I would like to move. Kind of behind the scarecrow. Sure. So Thoradin um, gets surrounded very temporarily by a silvery mist. So just picture a cloud, and he moves 30 feet over there. 
and then he reappears and he laughs. He goes, "Ha ha! Now you're mine." <laughs> um, what what's around me on the floor as far as debris? Is there rocks? Um, it's real swampy. You can you can you know on the road you you can find rocks. Are there any bones or sticks or anything? Well, or... Uh, the scarecrow that you ran over was a pile of sticks and stuff. So if you wanted to like grab a stick as you were running by before you misty stepped, I'd say you could have done that. You're okay with that? Are you okay if I say that I did that? Yeah. What a, what a great deal. Yeah. This uh, I mean, this is your turn. You're kind. Of, we're kind of like figuring out what you're doing, and then right. it all then it all processes. Fantastic DM. He's better. He's no one's better than him. Um. <laughs> Quite possibly the best in many cases. Um, so what I'd like to do is, I'm a, so I so I got one of those twigs from one of those dead scarecrows. So um, so I I become a, a dwarf again from the silvery mist, and I pick up the twig, and I go, time to say night night, Mister Scarecrow, and I will pull it over my head, and I go to hit him over the fucking head with it. All right. Um, is this your like? Tavern brawler strike. This is this is tavern brawler strike. This is what I'm talking about. Um, so that's going to be a D20 plus six because I use improvised weapons. Uh, very, very good at this. Yep, and you get so that's and and you can do it twice if you want. So that's a twelve for the first strike. That hits. All right, cool. Um. Can am I able to use that with two hands? Does that make a difference? It doesn't. Tavern Brawl doesn't say that it's versatile or. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay, fair enough. What if, for RP reasons, I I don't do a second attack and I just say, can I hit twice as hard maybe, with two hands? I don't know. It's probably better for you to. I'm trying to negotiate. This yeah, is it's probably better to try to do the two. I don't know. Yeah, I just I, I pictured me using my two hands. All right, that's fine. No, I mean All you right. still can do the two hands. It's just not gonna do. No, that's fine. I'm gonna whack. So I'm gonna whack them once, like a grandmother hitting a bad grandson with a spoon. Um, so that was a twelve, and then it'll be a D four plus three. Max maximum fun, maximum damage. That's a seven. All right, and that was. Uh, let's see. That's bludgeoning damage. Yep, bludgeoning. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you you hit you hit him and you hit him squarely right over the head, two handed with this stick. Um, but it seems like his head almost like kind of like absorbs some of the blow, being yeah. soft. Like it's like you're it's like you're hitting a pillow with a baseball bat, and instead of smashing the pillow, it kind of like some of it sinks in. Um, but but you you do some damage. Cool. All right. Um, then I'm going to try and do something funny here. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I already used my bonus action. Okay. All right. So then I'm just going to hit, I'm going to whack him again. Okay. Just going to grapple him. So throwing him winds up, goes to hit him again, and he says, Ah, oh, what's the matter? You don't like being hit by your friends? And he hits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's four. Four. Did you roll an attack on that one? No. So let's let's not put the cart before the horse. That's a nineteen. And right. then four you, damage. You hit him. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem super effective, but but you hit him and <laughs> knocked some feathers out of his ear. The black feathers come flying out of his left ear. His head kind of goes like this, and he's like just staring at you. Is that it? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I guess that's... Uh, I used the bonus action. I used two actions. I used movement. That's... That's going to be it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so from the direction you heard the the horse hooves, you see uh, 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 
Thornton, Alaric, anyone who's kind of looking in that direction, you suddenly see one of the uh, big, uh, nice gray uh, riding horses that um, the Martikovs had and that you guys had were using for um, pulling the wagon and stuff. You see it just tearing down the um, the, the, uh, the the path here, the road uh, on the dry ground, uh, and you see Deckard on, on its back. And he is just, I mean, he is hauling ass on this horse. You see right over his shoulder, like about 10, 15 yards in front of him, a black raven kind of dipping and weaving as he seems to be kind of following it. His eyes light up as he sees you guys. Uh, and this raven then just kind of like banks off to the right, like kind of does this like move as it like flies without slowing down or stopping back the direction they came from. And Deckard has entered the fray. Nice. So I'm still on horseback, right? Uh, correct. And what's my movement speed on a horse? I think 40. 40? And these are each 10? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So I can get to here, right? To like here. Uh, it, with a regular movement, yep. Yep. So I burst in on my horse, end up right here, and I say, "Howdy, fellas! Sorry I'm late. I'm here, uh, I'm here, I'm here." Oh, great for you to join the fun, lad! Just in time for the festivity. I wouldn't miss it. And uh, he spots this dude here. And just from horseback, uh, draws his hand crossbow, just like hanging onto the reins. And uh, the horse kind of like, you know, uh, what's it called when they like raise their feet up in the air? Um, it like does that. I've got like one hand on the reins and like I just take my hand crossbow and fire off a bolt at this guy. Love it. Um... So 14 to hit. Hits him. And then... Nine damage. Okay. Um, it hits him, but it kind of almost goes... Th- you, you, it goes through him too cleanly, where you're like, this, air, this bolt didn't like rip enough of him apart. You know what I mean? It kind of like went in and out. But yep. it's it seems to have hurt him a bit. Okay. Um, so what he does is actually the horse like comes down and like you know the horse like neighs, puts his feet up and shoots. Then it comes down and like kind of circles. And while the horse is circling, like he snaps the crossbow and um, lights it on fire, crimson right. So, um, the crossbow lights up. You see, um, Deckard wince in pain. I can never remember the damage I take. Hang on. Um, seven? Is that right? One roll of my hemocraft die. I'm what do we level? Are we seven? Yep. So I lose three hit points. Okay. Um. But I also lose like. Yeah, and your max hit points get reduced too, right? Right. Got it. So the crossbow lights up, and then he spins around on the horse, and this time fires off a bolt um, at this guy. Okay. Roll your attack. I mean, you're to hit or whatever. Uh, 16 to hit. Hits him squarely. And then 
Here, let me roll. Let me roll weapon damage first. <laughs> One damage, so six damage plus. That's physical damage. Okay. And then one fire damage. Okay. Even though it was just one fire damage, it does seem to be even more effective than you might have thought that part of it. So you, you hit the scarecrow, uh, the bolt goes through, uh, and you see this little spark of like flame on its one shoulder as it seems to be kind of burning its shoulder a little bit as it twitches around uh, between Alaric and Thoradin. Anything else? <coughs> and uh, that's all. Okay. Juniper, it's your turn. All right. So Juniper is going to board. She is going to use Druid. Create a small but cozy campfire between Ragnar and the Scarecrow that's approaching. Oh, okay. Let me right. let me draw a thing there. Okay. Yeah. So anybody nearby? Like here? Over here? Yeah. Oh, let me move oh, it. Well, I think okay. you. I think you meant like here, right? Yeah, probably about there. Okay. So she does that, and then as her bonus action, she reaches into the pouch that she keeps at her waist, and she grabs one of the rocks that she has. Six hit. Oh, yeah, a lot. Okay. Except for 13. Okay, and that's bludgeoning damage? It is. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, you, you run up, and Ragnar, you see this, like, just campfire just pur burst in front of you, just like it just appears. Um, and then over your left shoulder, you see this rock, this glowing rock come and strike the scarecrow that's right in front of you. Um, it, it, um, it hits it, but again, because of the softness of the, of this substance of this thing, um, it seems to absorb a lot of the bludgeon of the, of the rock. Uh, but it does, you see like feathers fly up and it seems to kind of knock it around a little bit. Anything else? No, that is all Juniper has. Good round. Okay, this scarecrow right here by Thoradin and Alaric uh, looks at uh, this. It, it kind of now spins around towards towards <laughs> Thoradin. It sees a, a, a smaller, um, uh, maybe easier target, and uh, it it turns around Thoradin and it stares right at you and it does it has that same kind of creepy face like its face contorts into this like horrific looking thing and you start to freak the fuck out um make a make a wisdom saving throw You, uh, you, you almost laugh that this thing is like trying to intimidate you. You've, you, you know, you, you yeah, you're muted, but you, you know, you've demons and hell spawn and whatever. You, you're not afraid of any of this shit. <laughs> you don't scare me with your demonic magic and your arcane tricks. He keeps trying to, he keeps scowling at you, but it's, it's so then I go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alaric, you saw the, the scarecrow that was right in front of you turned around and did that to Thoradin, and now its back is just exposed to you right there. Oh, I'm sorry. And then you also, you guys saw another scarecrow kind of it, way over here is just crawling through the swamp. It's kind of like almost half submerged. It's using its arms to pull itself through the thick swampy mud. Okay. Uh, this scarecrow here got 
but, but, what, blown up a lot by Spargle. This scarecrow here's uh, uh, been shot by Deckard and Thoradin, and, and I, I think you. So they they all love yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, the one right next to me, without getting too in depth, uh, I'm just gonna keep uh, poking and prodding. Okay. With my spear. All right. Is that uh? You get two of those. Uh, yep. And you're still raging, right? Yep. So sixteen to hit. Hits. Oh, ten damage. Okay, good solid hit again though because of its softness of its its just composition. It seems to kind of go through a little bit too easy, but does some damage. Okay, take another uh, take another stab at it. Okay, twenty three to hit. Hits. Uh, it's an eleven to, eleven to hit these guys. So uh, ten. All damage. right. Yeah. So uh, so you this time you stab through it and uh, a bunch of a bunch of this time a bunch of material blows out the back of it. Um, at this point, it doesn't even look like a scarecrow anymore. It's just like this like shaking bag of leaves and stuff. But it's still kind of just like sitting there, just in front between you two. Is that all? That's it for me. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, this scarecrow here moves, uh, comes uh, running. It, it's just, it almost looks like it's swimming through this muddy substance as it kind of like gets up towards Thoradin, uh, but that's all it can do is just gets right up next to him and is ready to jump on him. Uh, uh, so Spargle, you are frightened this turn, but then then you'll be done. So I'll, I'll just take that off. I'll take that thing off your character sheet. Or off your icon there. I don't know how to do that. Okay. okay. So you, so yeah, you're, you're, he hasn't moved yet. or It's not his turn yet, right? It is like right after you. So, right. So, right, right. Yep. Yep. So, so but so, I'm paralyzed still, correct? You're paralyzed this round. Now you're, you're, you're like just coming. Like you just, yeah, wait, after this guy moves, you'll be unparalleled. Yeah, 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 I got you. I got you. But okay, so um, what what exactly can I do? I mean, like if I, I'm scared out of my wits, that dude, right? Um, I, I know I can't move towards him. Am I am I like inclined to move away from him? Am I? I, I, know I guess I'm paralyzed. That's right. No, yeah, no. I think you're incapacitated. It's like you lose your turn. Okay. You can't take actions or reactions. It's just sort of like you're frozen. Okay, so you just hear me like mumbling like little incoherent curses during my turn. Like oil can, oil can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, let's see. So this scarecrow here, um, he uh, takes a a step forward like he's running he was still running towards Ragnar um but then there's he sees this like campfire in front of him and it instinctively knows enough not to go through it and doesn't have enough intelligence to figure out what to do so it just kind of like stands there in front of this fire all confused all right and then Ragnar it's your turn okay so he's very close to the fire uh, yeah, he's like kind of got as close as he could to the fire without getting uh, erupting in flame and is now just standing there confused. All right, well, I had other cool stuff I wanted to do, but I think I'm going to just run up to him. And can I just like grab him and throw him into the fire? Yes. Okay, I think that's what I want to do. Cool. Make a, <laughs> yeah, make a grapple. Make a grapple. Uh, what am I doing with. Uh... What dice am I using for that? Uh, let's see. I think it's just, I think it's just a strength check against his strength check, but oh okay. So I think you're just gonna make a strength check. If you just click on your sheet on the strength check, but let me double check that. Uh, you attack at? Oh wait, wait wait wait. No, you'd use the attack action. I'm a good DM. 
really good, the best. All my friends say I'm the best. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and make an make an attack. So like a one armed, one handed attack. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Twenty six. Twenty six. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So you you easily just sort of grab him. Uh, he, he, he like tries to struggle a little bit. Why don't you you want to move yourself? You're like right here. I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm over right on him. Okay. Yep. You move over on him and you just kind of like grab him and he he struggles for a minute. But his I mean it's like it's like you're wrestling a, a seven year old. Like it, it has like nothing compared. And you toss it in the fire, and it just pff, burns into. You just smell burning feathers, burning like cloth and sticks uh, as it uh, it just bursts into flames. Were you supposed to roll a d20 on that? or Because I think I see a d8. I did a d8 because it's a one-handed attack? Or I was supposed to do the d20 for the hit, probably. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Fine. I mean, I'm no, not no, no. sure. It, 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 no, it works fine. There was, yeah. there was, a, there was like a, there was no chance that it would, it would have succeeded. Okay. So you're good. Um, what I want to just do real quick, they, they have feathers in them, right? Mm-hmm. Before all the feathers burn up, I'm really curious about these feathers. I want to see if I, can I try to grab one? Yeah, they're everywhere. So, okay. so, so even though you threw it into the fire and it burned up, it left, you know, as it had been getting beat up, it just left like a trail of fires along or, or feathers along the ground. All right. I'm going to grab a few of those feathers and shove them into my pockets or whatever for later okay. inspection. And this is all wooded, swampy area, I assume. I'm going to move like one, if I can, one step up. Yeah, that'll actually take 20 movements. So you already I'm went, um, you already went 10, 20. So yeah, you're kind of stuck there for a minute. I'm, then I'm chilling here. All right, Thornton, it's your turn. The scarecrow that's between you and Alaric looks like it's just like a a, a stick with a a rag on it, just barely teetering. Oh. This other one that ran up to you, no one's even in, engaged. Uh yeah. So. I turn around to this new scarecrow that's entered the battle. Um, and I, I'm facing him. Or or it, really. I'm facing it. We don't uh, know what that means. I don't yeah. know, I don't know. You're supposed to um, say that. So I, I say to the scarecrow, uh, Oh, you got more friends, do you? Uh, and I pull out Talon. And I... Um, I go to hit him with it, but I charge up the hit with a divine smite. Mm. So I hold up Talon, and I, I say, Oh, the light doesn't like you very much, my ugly paper mache friend. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, uh, take, take, we'll, we'll take him out, take him down. All right, so mm. I, I'm going to use my hit. Right. Um, so that's with Talon. One and are handed. you doing divine smite as like normal spell slot or uh, higher? Yeah, like like just a regular one. Okay, so that's an extra two d eight if you hit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a natural twenty. Wow. Okay. So plus seven roll damage. Is your that a hit? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so roll your. Uh, are you one handing or two handing town? Um. Honestly, let me see your armor class. Hold on. I, you have, you have I your probably, shield equipped. Yeah, so I have the shield on. That's yep. one so one D eight plus four, and then roll another D eight for the crit. Uh it's it says slashing and it's highlighted. So it says two D eight plus four on my on my sheet. Okay. 
Is that incorrect or? I don't know why it says that. Is it because it's, it's slashing? I don't know if that's. Oh, mm -hmm. is it because I rolled a d20? Oh, maybe it knew that. That's I crazy. think it knew that because it I think changed it, knew it? That. That's really cool. I think I think it knows. Click it and let's see okay. if it goes back to one d8 plus four after that. It did. Oh That's wow! Sweet. It builds the crit in. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, so you do ten damage, and then my divine smite. Don't take that away from me. Um, which is an extra uh one d uh two d eight for the mm -hmm. divine smite. Right. Which I guess is a custom roll I'll have to do. Okay. So seven plus the ten is seventeen. Nice. All right. Yeah, you you run up and uh, you hit it, and this time, you know, even though you're slashing through it like before, the, your bright white flash of the divine smite uh, just sends a ton of the the feathers and and material out of this scarecrow, and it looks like it's in pretty bad shape. You haven't seen. You guys haven't seen any other scarecrows uh, come by yet. Are you done, Matt? Anything else? Uh, I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grapple. I'm gonna use my bonus action. Wait. Uh, I. Oh. Oh. No. So that that bonus action is if you hit with an unarmed strike or improvised weapon, you can use your bonus action to grapple them too. It's like your party. Oh, of I see. Yeah, I didn't. Like that. you okay. smash the guy in the head with a and then, mug, and then you yeah. headlock him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Deckard, it's your turn. You're still on horseback, standing next to the dead scarecrow next to you. You see these two left by Thorin and Alaric. They look about dead. You're muted. Sorry about that. Um, yep, yeah, so Deckard rolls up here, still on horseback, just puts his... Uh, Aims it down on this guy, his, his hand crossbow, and uh, shoots him in the face. <laughs> Fifteen to hit. Um, he, his his head blows apart. All you see is like <laughs> it, like a water his balloon, blows blows apart. black feathers, and you blew up the water balloon. Just you see feathers pop, and then just cloth and material fall to the ground. Nice. Okay. And then just the horse kind of spins and Deckard turns back around and fires at the other one. Uh, now, do you still have, is it still flaming? Yes. You're still flaming? Yeah. So okay, good. I got uh, that on record. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> that's going to be in drop that. madness. <laughs> no, but, but that's important for this one. The other one was a kill for sure, but. Okay. Um, so yeah, did I roll? Yeah, twenty-five to hit. Hits. So um, just regular damage is eight damage. Okay. And six fire damage. Okay. So the 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 arrow goes through and and you know you see some you know see it do it's it's harm but then again the flames just seem to really catch on this very um dry material and it looks as bad as this, the other scarecrow that you just blew up again it's just a couple sticks barely wavering um can you do anything else uh no that's it I'm okay good. juniper it's your turn you're about mm, you see all that happen. You're about 80 feet away from that scarecrow, and that's all you see right now in terms of the threat. Okay, so I'm trying to figure. So these scarecrow that like we came across, they were like standing in a field or something, right? They weren't just like hanging out in the swamp by themselves. No, they were. Well, the one you saw that was actually like 
mounted as a scarecrow was just kind of like on the edge of the road as you got past the road and into those this next area of like swamp but then the, all these other ones just sort of came out of the mist you guys are in like a little bit of a bubble because you can't see more than 120 feet out of the mist so they they just seem to have just kind of came from every direction okay um when she is going to forward you so it's on that Actually, if I create a torch using a druid craft, could I use that as an improvised weapon to throw it at that thing? Sure. Um, Be right back. Yep. But let me see. So, so you can only throw things about only improvised weapons. You can only throw about twenty feet. Uh, for a regular range or long range, which you'd have to roll disadvantage 60 feet. Yeah, that's even further than 60 feet away from me. Really? Well, you probably run by your your bonfire, ignite it with that, and throw it on the run. I, I would let you do that if you're going to try with disadvantage. Oh. To, to get the 60 feet. Yeah, sure. Um, just like trying to javelin. figure out how I'd use this to roll. I mean, I could always use my. Uh, Zoom. Yeah. Uh, but that only has a range of 60. You haven't moved yet, though, right? No, I just moved. Actually, it oh. says 60 feet, 120 feet. Right. The 120 is where you'd roll. Right, over for between 60 and 120, you have to roll disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then that would be the perfect thing to hit him with. I'm going to hit him with my boomerang. Okay. And I'm going to try to dip it in that fire first, see if I can't get a flaming boomerang. Hopefully, I'll throw it before <laughs> the fire part gets to my finger. <laughs> All right, I'll let, I'll let you do that. <laughs> All right. I don't think it's going to go well for me. That's oh, it. you love to see it. <laughs> You really do. Uh, you you love to right. see the sub five digits. So yeah, you, you roll <laughs> up and, it's, and you and you get it caught with the boomerang and you whip it. And it's going right at the scarecrow and then it gets caught in the tree right in front of it and, oh, it, just goes, and it goes out. <laughs> uh, is that it for you, Juniper? That's it. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Alaric, it's your turn. Okay. There's this one scarecrow that uh, is is barely alive in front of Thoradin. All right, I'm going to make a mad dash over there and I'm going to I'm going to try to poke him with my spear. Holy oh, shit. natural 20. Um yeah, so you you come running up and this you 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 stick the spear through him and and you you just rip through him like from the ground up and you don't even you can't even make make out what part of it was what it just it just threw into like feathers and and, <laughs> and, and 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 sticks and and it just looks like you just ran up to a, a bag of uh, uh, garbage and just kicked it and it just blew up into everything uh, <laughs> completely disintegrated and it is quiet now. Thirty one, that's nuts. It's the content yeah. I pay for. As the, as that, as you blow that thing up, you guys look up to the sky, uh, and that, realize that you, you've been fighting for a little while, and it's dark now, it's pitch black. The 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 clouds part just enough that you see the moon at its full apex, which in Barovia world means it's a new day. So you're now in your fifteenth day of the ninth moon of Barovia. And combat has ended. Um, 
I have to run to the restroom again and grab a drink. But uh, Juniper, it is a new day in Barovia. So Juniper kind of walks around a little bit, and she has a weird look on her face. And what else is new? Wow, mm -hmm. that's hurtful. But continuing on, she has a weird look on her face, and she says something's different. Something's off. Something yeah, but you're not. still just as ugly. It's with you. And she she walks over to Thorn and she grabs both of his cheeks between her hands and she squeezes. So his mouth kind of puckers up a little bit. And she goes, it's you. There's something different about you. You seem older. <laughs> he seems older, doesn't he? Looks she the inquires same to me. towards the group. He, he's like he's always looked like an old little feller to me. He, he, he's definitely smaller than he was about an hour ago. I mean, he seems particularly wrinkly under wow. the moonlight. <laughs> You'll agree, right? <laughs> particularly wrinkly. He's about equally hairy as he was an hour ago too. Yeah. Something that seems usually isn't something very seems a little different. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's funny, Juniper, if you were as funny as you were ugly, you'd actually be a great part of the group. <laughs> Even though you are clearly the most hurtful member of our happy little troop, getting older means that you get a gift in my group. So Juniper reaches down into her little pouch, keeps her rocks, and she gives Thoridan her lucky rock. It's happy birthday. Her lucky rock. So Thoridan takes it and he launches it across. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> red con. Red, red con that. <laughs> Where's Black when, when delete, you delete, delete, delete. <laughs> well, thank you, Juniper. I, I, I'm. I am a dwarf, so I know a thing or two about stones and rocks. So um, I'd like to see if there's anything peculiar about this rock um, using my my stone cutting ability. Mm. Dan's like, I didn't fucking, you know, this. <laughs> Dan's like, I didn't fucking plan for this. <laughs> He has to do everything on the fly with us. <laughs> um, so you look at this rock, and um, <laughs> you can tell, although to a layman's eyes, it would look like any other rock that you might have picked up. You can tell – oh, make a history check. <clears throat> Whoops, that was deception. Sorry. I fat-fingered it. Oh, thank God I got that out of the way. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> uh, six. Okay, if we get double your... Okay. You can tell that um, this isn't just a rock that was picked up recently. It's something that she has probably had with her for quite some time. It's got the little groove in it, like a worry stone. Hmm. Well, uh, Thoradin, he, he likes it. He likes it very much. Um, this isn't quite the rock uh, that I'd see from the mountains of Yahimmel, but this is quite a stone. I, I'm not accustomed to this old day gift giving, but this is this is neat. Uh, 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 and I, I looked you know, I'm still kind of shaking from that whole scarecrow thing or whatever, but I'm like, I reach into my pocket and I, I throw you a little like vial um, of stuff too. And I'm like, here, you'll like this. And it's one of my combustor oil containers. So as you give it to him, Thornton goes to, he unpops the cork and he goes to drink it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yes, be careful. <laughs> uh, be careful. Should I'll, I save I'll, it for a rainy day? Is what you're saying, Spargy? Ah, uh, it, it's it's potent. 
I like it, but it's potent. I'll send you a description of it. You know what we'll do? We'll save it for a rainy day. <laughs> and then I pick yeah. Juniper up and I give her a big kiss. And she's it's totally a me too moment. She's not feeling it. It's <laughs> totally it's, it's very <laughs> uncomfortable. Your mustache is into like Velcro. You guys are like Velcro on your fuzzy faces together. I better have all of the crumbs in my mustache that I went into that kiss with. And then I I give Sparkle a, a rub on the head. And I say, <laughs> thank you, little lad. I appreciate you. Deckard trots up on his horse. He says, you know, I, hey, man, I, I had a, fe a feeling that you had a birthday coming up. I, I, <laughs> I picked this up here uh, before I left Velaki to meet up with y'all. And uh, he pulls out, he pulls out a, like, it's like a bandana, but it's tied into, like, a mask. So that's what you might need, like, a mask. Well played. I picked this up in Velaki before we Is it red? Out. Is it red? Cover <laughs> your face. Is it red? It has to be red. It's red. Yeah, I got a red. I, I, I knew you liked red. And uh, so you can wear that from time to time if you're trying to hide your face. Oh, what? Where'd you get this from? The red brands? <laughs> yeah, I took it off. The, the, the when we fought in the arena. <laughs> hey, lad, when we fought in the arena. If, if you need a second one, I can get it for you. <laughs> if Strahd says we have to wear two. <laughs> if... <laughs> Thank you, Deckard. I appreciate it. I'll put this on as soon as I can, lad. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime, man. No kisses for you, Deckard. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's all, it's all right. Kiss the, the horse if you want. He turns the horse toward you. <laughs> and the horse goes. <laughs> all right. Anybody so else want to do anything? Ragnar walks up to Thoradin and uh, goes up to him and says, All right, lad, I've been working on this. I've been working on this with Juniper for a while. And uh, I knew you had a birthday coming up. And I think you're a good dwarf. I enjoy traveling with you. As you know, I'm from Mithril Hall. I've been whittling away at this for uh, a while now. I got it from Erwin over at the bar. <laughs> So he reaches into the pack. I'm going to put something in D&D General. Ooh. One second. This is, this is cool. Yeah, the, the three seconds I, I got to be creative in my life instead of doing data entry. <laughs> uh, there's that. Ooh, read it. I'll read it in a sec. Uh, I'm not good with, I'm not a so tech savvy here. Oh, here we go. You're, you're putting this in Discord or? Uh... It's, uh, it's in D&D uh, General, 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 General and Chat. Discord. So it's a sturdy wooden tankard with metal accents similar to any common tankard one would see in bars across the realms. On one side of the tankard, you see the carved image of Thoradin's majestic and intimidating Mount Holyfield. On the other side of the tankard, you see the sigil of Clan Battlehammer, a foaming tankard of dwarven ale on a shield with two notched axes crisscrossed behind it. On the bottom of the tankard, you see Ragnar's Maker's Mark, a carved image of the sword Shatterspike with the dwarven rune for R beside it. Oh! And I this, have... is, this is great, lad! I agree the budget was like way lower than this. <laughs> so like that white elephant where somebody spent a hundred bucks and you're like, hey motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, she gave me a rock. So I hand it to Thoradin and I say, and Juniper, Juniper was kind enough to put some enchantments on it. We know you break everything and you think everything is a weapon. So this is actually enchanted so that you can use it as a weapon. Oh my god. To bash some people in the skull. And furthermore, if you show this at any place, Clan Battlehammer holds some sway and they see my maker's mark, you'll be known as a, a friend of the clan. 
You get 20% on my next order. 20% off. You get 20% off at the quartermaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a tankard of tid sippy. That's good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a so, roll. Yeah, here's, here's one. I, I finally found my picture. Uh, that's the tanker. Oh, wow. That's really cool. But there's a picture on it, and I can't fucking find it. There it is. And that's the sigil that's carved into it. That's pretty cool. Plus Holy <laughs> Field on one, on the other side. I'm gonna that's bash awesome. some I'm gonna bash some skulls and drink some beer with this. You can feel free to bust heads with that, it won't break. But try not to lose it. Took a long time to whittle that while all you bastards slept. <laughs> uh oh, more bar fights. You're encouraging him. <laughs> I love a good bar fight. <laughs> All right. Anybody else want to do anything? Happy birthday, Thoradin. A lot oh, well, would probably you. just give Thoradin like a back rub. <laughs> oh, shit. Just tell him Foot how much rub, he loves him. Rub. No, just back, just back rubs here in Barovia. Back rubs. Uh, foot, foot rubs get a little weird. Like na like now, like right here. Right oh yeah, now, like or... right here, right now. What's the situation with the shirts? Like, do you guys have your shirts on or? Nope, no shirts. No. Oh. no shit. When no, did I ever put have... it on? We have shirts on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we have shirts on. One sensual massage. No, oh, not heart. sensual. Just from one friend to another. Give him a you, you got like strong a hands, Alaric, and I got a rough and tough back. <laughs> Let me knead. Uh, Braid the back hair while you're there. I want you to make biscuits from my back fat, lad. <laughs> <laughs> biscuits? <laughs> biscuits do. Oh, I don't Braid like that. Hair. I don't like that at all. <laughs> and I, and uh... I need an adult. <laughs> yeah. Stranger danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. All right. Um. So I'm I'm moving us back to this other map. Uh. It's it's quiet now. You're in the thick swamp. The fog is still right around you, but uh, that's where you're at. Seems like you eliminated the immediate threat. Do you guys think we should make camp, or do you think that is it is this a bad like bad spot for that? I'm usually not one to camp out in creepy swamps, but I hear you. It is getting late, and this dwarf is kind of tired. Being a gorilla takes a lot out of you. What do you guys think, Ragnar? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm Dark. definitely down to take a rest. We could yeah, we could so take a rest. How you feeling, Deckard? You better? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm sure glad you got here. Oh, you, 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 MF, you MFers came out here and got lost, though. <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, we do that pretty well. You know, weren't there some folks that were going to help us get where we were going? Yeah, we thought we didn't need them, so it's it, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right. We got to kill this witch anyway. Are you guys start? taking short or long rests here? Long Probably short rests, I would think. Probably a short rest, right? Yeah. We need to make some ground on on uh, Farford yep. Nugas told. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, let's do a short. That That's probably better, though. Given that we're in the middle of this swamp. Okay. Deckard didn't hear um, Fiona's little or whatever her name is. Your real Wagner's uh, speech, did she? Oh no, he heard the speech. That he was did. before you. That was before you guys got to the blue. Oh yeah. Or was it on our way out? That's why it's like I'm trying to remember. Well, yeah, he might not have heard that. Uh, I'll br uh, either way, if 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 he if he wasn't there, I'll bring him up to speed on it. Um, so I'm sorry. Are you? 
Are you guys trying to take a long rest or a short rest here? Take a short rest. Oh yeah, brother. It, yeah, maybe on the road or something. Okay. Uh, you guys sit down, and as soon as you start to quiet down, like you're ready to just chill for a little bit, the flies and everything around you, um, because of your because of your non movement stuff, start to swarm. Oh, geez. They're all over you. They're in your ears and eyes and mouth and everything. The minute you're you're not moving, they're all over you like flies cool. on shit. Flies on shit. Um so and uh is and a good uh craft to make a small fire to maybe get them to leave. Okay. Um at, before you do that or as you're doing that, um, they they attack. They they kind of like bite at almost everybody. So um, let's see how many this here. All right, a spargle of five to hit misses. Five to hit. Um, Thornton misses. Seven to hit. Alaric misses. An 18 on Juniper and a 16 on Ragnar. Yes. Okay. Juniper, you had a 16. Does that hit you? Yep. And then, uh. Okay. So just Juniper, you take, um, 10. Piercing damage. Yeah. Damn. You hate to see it. So, so Deckard looks real uncomfortable. And he's like, all right. Like he's swatting flies away, and he's like, God, fellas. I mean, I don't. And like, <laughs> I don't know what you heard, but uh, that this is, what they told me back in Velaki was uh, some raven came back, Muriel, and uh, told me there was a really powerful witch tag here in, in this swamp and uh, we might not want to mess with it. Must be referring to Baba Yaga. That might be it. Apparently this this woman's creepy as shit. <laughs> but she's got the goat people held captive. Yeah, she's got that and then apparently she's got one of the one of them gems from the winery too. Yeah, Muriel mentioned that. I think we got to take her out. I love me some gems. <clears throat> well, I don't know if we can sit here with these flies. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's the best place to camp either, unless we can. <sighs> yeah, you you guys pretty quickly get the sense that it's going to be tough to get any kind of rest <clears throat> around here with these flies and everything. So we got to move. We got to move out. We got to move on the road, get on the road. Either we keep going further into the swamp or we get out of the swamp. Does somebody do something to disperse the flies? Yeah, I, um, I'm going to, I'll use thunder as smite. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do that. That's a spell slot. Um, and I should I use it on a fly or should I just use it on a tree or? No, yeah, yeah. no. You're just kind of like blasting towards this like cloud of flies. Go ahead. And yeah. Roll your two d six. Okay. All right. Um. So it's a twenty. Okay. It's a twenty six. Is that a hit? Yep. And then, um, six for the thunderous smite. Okay. Uh, so the flies kind of disperse. And you hear thunder. Loud crack of thunder you hear. As if the gods themselves personally created a thunderstorm around us. <laughs> All right, so you get that you can't rest here, but um, 
it seems like the scarecrows or anything that have, were, were like coming towards you, um, you, you've cleared out. So you're free to move about kind of out of combat now. Well, whatever you guys want to do. Go ahead and start moving yourselves around. I'd like somebody to kind of like be the lead so I can do this fog of war. All right. Move in or, or move out? What do you guys think? We got this far. I'd say we move, move in. All right. Let's do it. All right. I'll start moving down the trail a little bit, I guess. I'll walk with them. Are you going to stay on the path? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's stay okay. on the road. Which definitely moves you along faster. And you guys keep moving yourself. Even though these are 100-foot squares, you know, this is time is passing. And um, you are finding not, not too much here. You, you know, you, you see ruined cottages. You see these, like, low stone walls. The cottages are, like, half submerged in, like, mud and muck now. Like you could tell this whole area, it's like there was a, a village here and it was like, you know, filled up halfway to the halfway up every building, which is mud and shit. Like all of a sudden, like the ground rose up into a swamp many years ago and just buried this town. So everything's kind of like sticking up out of the mud, the tops of things. Uh, and, and that's what you see. <clears throat> Ragnar wants to walk up to one of the ruined foundations and use his archaeological and his history skills to kind of get a sense of what happened here. All right. I love this. Hold on. Uh, okay. So... You feel like this village is about 200 years old. You feel you you feel that like this 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 bog and everything and this marsh that has risen up around it is maybe 150 years old. So this is this it, it, this town is a couple centuries year old, but it also has been buried for a very long time as well in this murky swamp. And that's all I could tell. Um, yeah, unless there's something like more specific that you're trying to discern. Uh, I guess I'll go closest to to the building closest to me, and I'm gonna kind of crouch down in the muck and dirt and start like peeling away some of the mud. I am an archaeologist. Yep. That's that's why I like this kind of stuff. Yeah, you start oh. digging through, and you and you, you you think that this was probably a a, a fairly common type of village. Um, the construction was um, adequate, but not fancy, not poor either. Like it was a very probably established town a couple hundred years ago. Um, Maybe uh, more on the agricultural side, farming and, and stuff around here. You're actually really surprised that this is a swamp. And you think that the where this town was built and how it was built and the, the construction of the buildings, that this was, it's very surprising that this is a swamp. Like this was like a, this should have been like a very affluent kind of village, prosperous and could have sustained itself for a long time. So it's odd that it's in this is state it right now. Would it be fair for me to say to the group that I think that the swamp is artificial? Yes. Okay. So I relay. That or or it would be it would be fair to say that it's it's odd and abnormal and 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 unnatural that this swamp is the way it is now. Yeah. What you said. Okay. Uh, I say to the group, uh, lads and juniper. It seems it's it seems like something terrible happened here, and I got a feeling this this swamp isn't completely natural, and has something to do with something more sinister. It you mean it? Um, is it magical in nature, the swamp, or is it more of a <clears throat> flooded by by intervention? I wouldn't be able to say that, but. Nothing about nothing about this this area makes any sense. 
and it and it seems <clears> like it should be a prosperous, well-functioning town, and it's just a filthy bog. I think there's more more to this village. I bet you that gym has something to do with it, lads. Maybe they're trying to hide something here because it's such an inhospitable place, and you know they don't want us to find what's actually here. That gem is corrupt in the land. Maybe she can use that gem to flood the village as well as grow crops the way the Martikovs use it. That's what that I'm must, thinking. That must mean she sure has a lot of power. Maybe we should adjust our strategy here. <clears throat> the one of stealth. Trying to get that whatever she has hidden there for the source of power that Juniper, it's going to come to blows no matter what we do. Let's face it. I'm sneaky. I can stealth. Well, we got to take her out one way or another. We, we're friends with the Martikovs and we're friends with the Order of the Feather. And we need as many friends as we can get in this cursed land. It does seem like, you know, when we were, where they had that other gem, it was just like waste as well, too. Uh, Kind of an unnatural fact from it, so maybe. I'm not saying I... that we shouldn't fight. I'm just maybe we should, like do a little bit of maybe. Maybe we let the cowboy do some stealth things. Some scout. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Let kind of know what we're uh, in, instead of just charging in here. Kind of know what we're up against, but. It doesn't sound like a an easy thing, Deckard. This witch sounds pretty nasty, so I I don't know. I could cast invisibility on you. Um, that might help you be even more so sneaky. Not to disrupt, but um, I like where you guys are going with this. If this if we want to play it out this way, that somebody's going to scout and you guys are hanging back, I'd say tell me what you're doing to like help the scout. And then we'll roll some dice and move the scout around to see what you can find. Juniper has of outer trace, so I think she. Amber, you keep cutting out. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Juniper has pass without a trace. I'm trying to figure out whether or not she can use that. You know that, Adam, right? Didn't you have that on your on Lawson? Mm, no. Well, kind of. I didn't have Pass Without a Trace, but I inherited that ability with my cloak years and years down the road. Shit. It gives you a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks? Yeah. Yeah, Master Master Baden had it on his staff, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> yep. I did. Yep. That was, that was but, pretty sweet. But yeah, basically the thing that Doug programmed into my cloak was that, give or take a little right. bit. Nobody knew where I was masturbating <laughs> nobody I was very sneaky um, so yeah I mean Deckard, Deckard hops off the horse and says uh, here take watch your fellas or, watch the old gal here her name is Snickers Snips. oh hello Snickers Snickers oh. sounds Snickers. like a good name for a candy <laughs> <laughs> might be on to something there so we get back to Waterdeep. We'll look into that. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty. That is a sweet spell. Plus yeah. ten to Dex and can't be yeah. tracked. That'll give me a plus eighteen to stealth. No critical misses. That's so all you the get only is. thing I need to avoid. The only thing we'd wish is that I was a halfling, so I couldn't roll a one. Yeah, that and it keeps the group together too. Hmm. -hmm. Okay. Oh, so, so are you guys going to do that? Are you guys going to move as a group with Clo Pass Without a Trace? Or are you going to kind of concentrate on Deckard and let him go out and scout? I'm cool with what e either way. Oh, I had intended for the group to do it, but if anybody has any reservations, mm -hmm. I mean, just. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fine, but does anybody wear, like, the, the armor that gives you disadvantage? Let's see. Uh, I think I do. Uh -oh. 
we could probably leave some people to the side just in case. Oh, stuff don't, sideways. don't forget. Yeah, so Thordin's or... really noisy. <laughs> Thordin and Ragnar are may, not may good really, at huh? Yeah, yeah, you guys aren't good at sneaking. Like, I assume. Shields, <laughs> chainmail. <laughs> the non plate wearers would be all sneaky enough with Pass Without Trace. <laughs> I could hang back, lads. It's fine. Dwarves are not sneaky. I'll study the ruins more. Okay. Strike. Don't, don't forget the windmill. I'm just saying. We split up and... I know. I know. That's Let's the one just thing make I would... sure we're all on the same page with the strategy here. Like, if you guys go in, don't start a fight. You know what I'm all right. saying? All right. Deckard, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a good just point, recon. Thornton. Uh, Thornton, if we're up there and you can't see us, and you see uh, a flaming arrow bolt go straight up into the air. We're in trouble. All right, that's the signal. I'm, I am, I am okay with that. Very I much like so. I, like I dig that. that. That's cool. All right, so Deckard and let's see. You know what? I'm just for the sake of ease. I'm gonna say Deckard. You're right there. Juniper's cast pass without a trace. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna kind of let you move around, and I'd like you to just okay. move one square at a time, because that's 100. I can't see myself for some reason. Oh, oh there I was. I was under Thordin. Never mind. Oop! I just turned Thordin somehow. I don't know how. I did <laughs> there we go. There you My go. bad. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. So yeah, I'll. Okay. Now let now go slow because this again this is 100 feet at a time, so you might like got stumble. It. Or something. Oh, got it. Okay. So you're, you guys are moving through. Uh, follow Deckard here. You, Deckard, you can move another square. I'm going to keep revealing as you go. And now I'm telling you, this is like fog is like you can't see 10 or 15 feet in front of you. So you're just kind of like pushing through the fog, kind of feeling around. You see these long, these like low walls because um, the swamp is kind of eating everything. And it is really, really slow going. You're, I mean, you're it, like you're, you, you almost sink up to your knees in muck and so it's like that hard to kind of walk through but um you're good there and uh you see a little bit further out okay so go ahead and move okay perfect you see a little bit further out go down this way okay and you're following like uh the walls and stuff where your buddies were yeah like i see these walls here yep um so i'm just kind of trying to use cover to the best of my ability is Alaric with us? No. Um, Alaric, what did you decide? Are you staying back with the dwarves, or are you going with them sneaking? Um, no, I, I'm sneaking with them. Okay. Then, yeah, you can kind of just keep moving, but let Deckard lead, because I don't want you guys yeah. to stumble too far into something that I'm supposed to sh show you. All right. Okay, so Deckard, you... I would say off to um, this direction, even though it's foggy, you can tell there's a more substantial structure this way. Okay. Oh, it doesn't ping when it's in the fog of war, does it? Oh, no, it, it does. does. Yeah, it does. It okay. does. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, yeah, I keep going then. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay. All right, you're starting to see the um, outline of a fence kind of area of what looks like a larger, maybe, mansion, um, large business building, something that was more than the little cottages and stuff that you just walked through to the southwest. So there's like a structure right in here that I'm sorry. Yep. To see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So go ahead and move yourself one more square south. And I'll tell you what you guys see. Or I think I was one more. Sorry. <clears throat> Goats! <laughs> Toward... That? All right. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Toward the south end of the village lie the remains of a mansion built on higher ground. 
It has been reduced to piles of stone and rotting timber. Empty, arched windows stare at you. South of the ruin, an untamed garden. Uh, just re reveal a little bit more. South of the garden, an untamed garden runs rampant, surrounded by broken walls that are no longer able to contain it. East of the ruin, which is where you see the goat, uh, someone has erected a crude fence, forming a circular lar yard in which several goats are penned. Surmounting the fence posts are human skulls. So this is like a round pen of like sticks. Every stick, and there's about 50 of them in like this circle, has like a human skull facing outward. And there's no door or anything on it. There's no door or gate. But behind the little sticks, you see about seven to ten goats just milling about. Skinny, kind of sad-looking goats. This sounds real nice. <clears throat> um, yeah, I want to keep sneaking around it, like, down through here. Like, to maybe oh. get a better look. Yeah, go ahead and move yourself, and I'll keep doing this. I'm cool with you guys kind of moving and assuming time's moving. It, you guys just know it's really sluggish. This is like hour that it's taken you to go from those in uh, an hour. It's been a half hour to get just from Thornton and those guys to where you're at. It's just that slow. Maybe 15 minutes, but anyhow. Yeah, so you, you get a little bit further south there. Um so on this side, you see that garden. You see like tall weeds and thorny vines. Behind it, you see like some sculptures in the garden that look like maybe they were fancy a long time ago. They're like nude men and women kind of, you know, David sculptures, Michelangelo shit. Um, that's about it. Do you, are you going to go inside of the garden? Um, so you say we've been traveling for like 15 minutes? Yeah, 10 or 15 minutes. And we didn't see anything through here? No, just swampy mess of, you know. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I whisper back to Juniper. Hey, hey you think we should, uh, should we get uh, Thornton and, and Ragnar before? It's been a while. They're not going to be able to get to us very quick. Yeah, I think... I think we should get the rest of our foods before we try to rescue those goats, because that doesn't mm -hmm. look like a good one. So, yeah, um, I guess because I'm a little bit faster. Well, wait, yeah, my because I move an extra ten feet, right? Yeah. Jennifer would take her hand, she'd press them into the ground, and she would use Mold Earth to make the difficult terrain normal terrain. Ooh, yes. <laughs> And Dex's like, oh, yeah, yeah, do, do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> do that. All right, so Juniper, what are you doing exactly? He uses mold earth. It will last for 30 feet. I hope it's an enjoyable 30 feet for you. Oh, no, that's the range. It's going to last for <clears> five <throat> feet. Gonna be a real short good time. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why am I not? Why am I not seeing this on your sheet? Molder. Yeah. What's it's what do you? What, it's under what? It's a cantrip. Oh. oh, oh. It's at well. So I mean, I guess I could technically go with him and make it a shorter experience for him. Yeah. You could actually walk and keep casting this. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't require any components or even motions. It's somatic, which means you're just, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, somatic is, uh, you're, yeah, you're just like kind of, as you're walking, you're just making hand motions and the ground in front of you is slowly gelling from this like mud into something completely solid. It turns from mud to cement right in front of people as they're walking. Uh, and you can, since it's a cantrip, 
and there's no components and it's just an action, I'd say you can kind of keep doing this in front of the group as you guys go. Are, are you thinking of like circling back and getting the others? Is that what you're thinking, Deckard? Uh, yeah, I feel like we're, we've gone. We're, they're not going to be able to get to us quickly. If anything goes yeah. down. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and we didn't run into anything on the way here, so they can clank their armor all they want. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's do a time check. It's eleven. What do you guys want to? Where do you guys want to go to? I'm I'm good for whatever. I'm good for whatever. Same here. Whatever works for me. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna what, whatever we do tonight. We're gonna cut it off in the middle of something. So you guys want to go another? Uh, whatever. L what let's say wanna... eleven thirty, and then if we if if someone's not feeling it, we can just reevaluate. Okay. Um, you know, but let's shoot for eight eleven thirty. That works. Yeah, for me. I'm I'm not gonna like cut it off in the middle. Of, I mean, we'll just go till whenever we're good, and it it won't be a good breaking point no matter what at this point. So that's all good. All right, so you guys head back and pick up the others. And I I like this idea of kind of Juniper out there in front since it's a cantrip, she could do it perpetually. She can kind of just continue to. You go. You guys go a little bit slower because she has to like cast as you're walking. But it would be an. Well, actually, it would even out, right? Because the the slowness of the difficult terrain would be offset by the fact that she's cleaning it up. So you actually get back to the guys quicker. We could get even like in view and just kind of be like, you know. Yep, and Juniper could even point out in front of uh, Thor, uh, uh, the dwarves, and just kind of create a, a nice path for them to get back quicker. All right. So is that, if that's what you're going to do, I'll assume you guys are all regrouped over this way. Cool. All right. So you're standing in front of, you're in this swamp. There's this like decrepit mansion. There's this weird makeshift round um, pen uh, with all these human skulls on it with a bunch of goats in it. You can, you guys could tell enough that that wasn't part of the original construction of this now long gone mansion what would you like to do ragnar quick looks at the goats and says juniper do you know these goats that's racist <laughs> 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 hashtag fire ragnar <laughs> ragnar looks really uncomfortable and he's like ah, I, I didn't mean it that way Her mustache bristles and frustration I just didn't just know if that was more shape-shifting goats. <laughs> cool. I don't feel good about these skulls, lads. I don't know if we should walk past them without inspecting them. Well, I mean, they're dead already, so I don't think they're going to do anything. I think there might be more to it. Why haven't the goats walked past them? Have you met goats before? Just the one. Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> so Jennifer agrees that there seems to be something really wrong with that pen and that they shouldn't approach it without taking a closer look at it. So she is going to suggest to herself and anybody else that might have any kind of experience with magic or things of the occult to the end. I'm gonna hey Dan yeah um I am gonna like all right I'm moving behind like a lark here and I'm just kind of like approaching the 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 pen a little bit here okay um, I'm gonna cast detect magic on or yeah, I guess you don't have to detect. It, I'm but... not really on, just kind of like an area. Like yeah, so, yeah. if I can get in within range of one of the goats, but even the 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 fence itself, you know what I mean, and everything, and that. I mean, is there a goat within thirty feet of the edge? Oh of the yeah, fence? yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Oh, totally. Yeah, that that uh, whole fenced-in area is about a hundred feet across. 
Yeah. So yeah, they mill about. In fact, some of them, if you guys walk up, they kind of some walk right up to the fence near you. Um. So let's see. Detect magic. Uh, prison. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you cast detect magic. Yeah. All right. Um. You don't detect anything abnormal or magical about the goats themselves, but these 50-ish human skulls that are around the, um, that are on the, the top of each of these like little posts around this fence uh, just light up with um, magic. Um, uh, with, of a, of a, denim, a, a, what was I about to say? A divination nature. Okay. Um, I'm going to relay that to the group. The, the 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 goats themselves don't seem to be um don't seem to be magical, but something with these these the, you said the skulls or the posts. The skulls. So the posts are just sticks, but if you're looking if things are like glowing. It's the skulls yeah. on top of the posts are like bright glowing to you. Mm. Yeah, I um something's with the skulls. Spargo, you said it was of a divine type of magic. Yeah, it's it's you know it. It has an aura that is like that of the the school of divination. Yeah, not divine, not godlike, but divination. not godlike. Like yeah, seeing, seeing, and uh, whatever. Hmm. These these skulls are centuries, lads. That's my gut feeling. I, it could be some type of summoning thing, like a summoning circle or something. You know, there's some more nefarious associations with goats and summoning as well, too. Um, mm. I mean, we can't be the first people to try to rescue the goats, right? There has to have been someone that's come out here to face the bog witch to rescue the goats, right? I'll, if I'm within... Are they considered small beasts? Goats? Um, is that a medium? Good question. I would guess... Small, small. Goat. It's a medium beast, yeah. It is a medium? Okay. Uh-huh. If we find the goats, do I get to eat them? You Depends on how sentient they are. I didn't say you. I said the goats. <laughs> and if you don't shut your trap, I'll eat you too. <laughs> so if nobody has any other ideas, Jennifer could try to maybe talk with the goats. To see if anybody else in the area has, you know, attempted to rescue them, and maybe they've seen what the the skulls do. I, I support this. So That's I a great idea. idea. Yeah. I agree. Okay, so that's what Juniper's gonna do. She's gonna cautiously approach the pen, and she's going to. I guess she's probably already at eye level with the goat that is closest to the to the edge. 
goes, hey. All right. All right, this is good. Okay, so a goat walks up to you. All right. So. And oh, and so what? Do, I'm sorry. And it and it seems to acknowledge that you're speaking to it. And what do you ask it? Uh, so far, all I've said is "Hey, you," and like attempted to get atten uh, attention. But once okay. I have it over towards me, kind of conspiratorially, she goes, "Hey, we want to break you out of here, but we're not quite sure what's going on with those skulls up top. So, has anybody tried to rescue you yet?" Did something happen to them, or do you have any kind of information on what's going on with this pen? All right, so so let me see how this works. So a goat has um, like a like a two intelligence. Oh no! So so it means it's barely able to function. Very limited speech speech and knowledge, but you are able to communicate to it like with it like kind of telepathically verbally so you're able to talk in english so you ask it that it's not the most intelligent and aware thing um but it it, it responds back to you and it says uh, it basically says uh no rescue been here weeks taken from the mountains mean lady hmm. is the mean lady here now Mean lady takes us every 30 days, brings us more. So Jennifer is going to relay the information provided by the goat to the rest. So they, they, they don't want to be rescued. So she asks the goat, do you want to be rescued? Oh, please go home. Want to go home. <laughs> well, this goat sounds like me at a fucking party. I've got some good news. <laughs> Where's like the dog to pet? <laughs> yeah, that's a good move. Once That's what I go do. home. Yeah, I the, just you, pet you the dog the... and I leave without saying goodbye. Ah, uh, the Irish goodbye. That's my. I'm I'm an expert at that. I know the Northern Irish goodbye too. We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you get the you get the sense and the response that this goat wants. To get the fuck out of here um they, they, they've been captured by this lady every so often she comes by and takes some of them okay um fargo hmm. what's the worst that could happen if we just threw something at one of these skulls. Well, I was thinking just that. Would you guys object if I firebolted one of these skulls? Because it sure as hell could alert this witch. No. But... Alaric <laughs> does not object. You should do it. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. That's as much... Oh, boy. As much as I need. Juniper, tell the goats to back up. We don't want to burn who we're rescuing. Oh, what if they're children? What if they're actually children? No, just <laughs> it's Barovia. Yeah. Of course they are. <laughs> There's are probably special needs kids too. They're all polymorph like, kids. You know, they're from the windmill. Right. They're the like, windmill and Baba Saga have a, a thing little, going. Angelic little perfect babies. Hey, so maybe she's so. just an Israelite providing burnt offerings to the Lord. <laughs> All right, as soon as I got a couple murmurs of, of assent, and it, <laughs> no problems, no problems, no, no, nope. I go pew and I <laughs> shoot a firebolt <laughs> at one of the, uh, yeah, one of the, the skulls. One that's fairly, you know, make sure it's kind of away from any goats. Firebolt does 2d10. Okay. And. All right, make a ranged spell attack. It's not going to be a difficult, but in case you natural want it. Okay. So, yeah, you you scan it out. You know, it's, again, it's these 50 skulls-ish around this circle, and you look for the one. There's one off to the right that the goats seem to be coming up towards. Um, actually, the one's talking to Juniper, but the others are kind of migrating over, too, because, you know, that's what goats do. 
Um, so yeah, you blast one of these skulls and it, it bursts. It like, like pops, right? And then like a little burst of flame. And mm-hmm. instantaneously, the other 49-ish skulls start screaming. You hear a human, like, like different voices. Like it was like maybe the voice of the people that the skull belonged to screaming as if they were being murdered. Oh, um, and it's, Yay. it goes on and on. It doesn't stop. They're just screaming and screaming and screaming. Um, Yay. seconds or, or, or as this is going, you guys start looking around, freaking out and stuff. Um, Ragnar. Um, you're, you're getting really nervous and you kind of like looking around, looking back to see if anything's coming and up, uh, from where you guys were. Okay. So where you guys just came through these like low cottages and, and, and buildings and stuff, you see it's about the size of a hot tub, an upside down, huge dragon skull with this woman this old crazy woman in it and i'm gonna sh- i'm gonna show you what she looks like oh god and oh. she's sitting on top of this skull and her face is just insanely mad and she's she looks like she's barreling down through the thing and it's whipping through the air like a magic carpet so grab a coin too soon dude too soon <laughs> You got to let a year pass before you start throwing <laughs> grandma coin jokes, my bro. <laughs> but that, no, but it's, and it's bobbing and weaving and it's, it comes flying up over these hills as she comes, just her face looks insane. And she says, you have the stench of the birds on you. Leave my goats alone. Get me some honey hut. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, give me some honey on. I don't know. What so that leave is. my birds alone, she says, huh? No, 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 no. She says leave you have the stench alone. of the birds on you. Leave my goats alone. She's anti-bird. She's an anti-bird, right? These your goats, or did you maybe find these goats and put them in your house? Because it seems she... like it's the latter. She, she, her, she pauses this uh, dragon head that she's flying through the air, and it almost like she like hits the brake and spins it towards you and she stares at you for a second. She goes, oh, what are those forest gnomes from the, the, the hills of Mount Balanac? I thought the Mad Mage killed you all. Well, I'll finish it. Oh, shit. What are you going to finish with your saggy tits and your disgusting <laughs> hair? <laughs> Her face that was already in, ra- in a rage mode turns to this just look and scowl that is just frightens you all to your core. Um, oh, touch the nerve, did I? Oh. Um, so she she brings the uh the the skull head kind of down towards the front of you. And I'm going to end the session there because we're going to roll for initiative at the oh, beginning. Of the oh day. no. Oh, fuck. I will me. take you I take oh, you to no. where we're going to be. Well, no, no, I'll, I'll clean that up next time. So, um, she's coming down at you guys after you've been throwing some insults, and she's ready to throw down. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm glad we got yeah. our dwarves up with us. She don't know that I got the holy light behind me, so wait till she sees that. She's going to flip out. I'll use a rope on her. Sounds like, can I light a rope on fire and then... <laughs> Can I do the ATA thing? ATA thing? Yeah, can I do right harpoons and tow what cables? What can I do? Can I use the skulls to like make a bowling ball or something? <laughs> right, right, right. Um. So, all right, this is good. You guys kind of explored the the swamp ruins of Berez. You found where the goats are being held. You talked to the goats. You killed off a number of scarecrows in the area and haven't seen any others, but um, you set off some sort of uh, signal or alarm or something to this hag, and she is uh, really mad and coming right at you guys. And we will start literally the next session. We'll be roll for initiative. Let's see how this goes. Nice. Okay. 
Baba Yaga. Let me shut this off. Thanks everyone for watching. Is that her actual name? Baba Lasaga. Baba Lasaga.